I think I think that's interesting because I like <laughs> what you're saying is like who really cares if um the players in the open world aren't doing that well? I mean, we we are having this discussion because people are frustrated that people entering instanced PVE content um are not accustomed to that style of play, right? Like we don't we don't really notice or care that much in the open world if the guy next to us isn't doing max DPS. If we want people to be better at instance PVE content in the in- end game, you need to like force people into that within the story. And I think it's interesting because this is a very like Guild Wars 2 centric problem, not being forced into P- instance PVE content. And if we're, to- if we're talking about like brand new players coming into Guild Wars 2 that have come from o- other MMOs and stuff like that, being like forced into dungeons, instant PVE content, that's like really normal. And that's that's really comfortable for mmo players they're always looking forward to the next dungeon and it's interesting that it's like a very guild wars 2 problem that if we introduced that kind of system that guild wars 2 players would be upset but i think current guild wars 2 players are already at the end game anyway so i don't think it really impacts them it only impacts the new players um and so yeah i mean would would be rather that the open world feel too challenging uh, for a solo player, or would we rather the open world be kind of okay, and then they have to do instance PVE every now and then, and they've got to like actually learn their role in the instance PVE content? All right, we're live, and the music's gone. Yeah, you guys thought well, I was going to let you enjoy Crab Rave Rap God combo, but I'm not. <laughs> and here we are. Look at this. It's tea time. Tea time is here, and it's a very important topic today. Okay, it's uh, you know something that will be touched upon. By the developers. There's some changes to this coming up fairly shortly. And it's something that I think is it's a it's a, a difficult conversation to actually navigate. It's a an interesting topic to explore for this reason because you have to challenge your preconceived knowledge, your preconceived ideas about how you view Guild Wars 2. I am of course talking about the new player experience and in particular actually how the game uh, gives feedback to the player on, you know, like uh, what they should be doing, if what they're doing is working, if it isn't working. It's a very wide-ranging topic. I know that a lot of our guests here uh, have some very <sighs> interesting takes on this. I know that Sneb has some strong opinions about stuff like story not killing you, right? And, of course, welcome to our two wonderful new guests here. We have Bloom and we have Emmy. Hi. Boom. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the uh, the show, everyone. And, of course, you know what's interesting? And I'm just going to let Bloom kind of introduce this topic, actually, because um, he reached out to me on Twitter, actually, to specifically, you know, like, want to discuss this particular idea and actually has a few videos on his YouTube channel, actually, that um, talk about a key issue, specifically gearing, actually, that was very recently made um, in Guild Wars 2. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you let you take the stage here. Like, give me your well, kind of introductory thoughts on this particular topic, you know, highlight maybe a few key issues and just take it away. Totally. Yeah, so I think number one thing is that I think like a lot of a lot of systems in Guild Wars 2 aren't um they're not that difficult to understand once you're like within the Guild Wars 2 sphere, but for like brand new players, all that stuff is super confusing because there's no way for the game to point out all these things. And I think the main like fundamental issue is that the new player experience is like not at all close to what the actual end game experience is. And I think that gap is way wider in Guild Wars than it is in something like Final Fantasy or WoW. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's due to the, like the gearing system, how to get gear. Um, I think it's due to the tutorialization and how you're not taught about break bars and that sort of thing early on in the game. Um, I think it's you're not taught about roles. You're not taught about how to play those roles early on either. Um, and you have like no avenues to do that because the game doesn't really reward you with like, I don't know, it doesn't try to make you, you know, specialize into healing or boon providing or anything like that early on in the game. Um, yeah. And kind of to like build on that is like, I feel like 
a lot of times you have to go to third party resources, right? It's like, you yeah. can't just find this information in game. There's like no like quest line, no tutorials that kind of say like, Hey, you can join a squad and here are all of the squad functionalities. You know, you don't see that at all. So in order to actually do it, you either have to do it yourself or you have to go to a YouTube video, go to a content creator, go to a Twitch stream, maybe read a guide or something. So it's a lot of extra work. And I think a lot of like, you know, the casual player base, they don't know that they need to put in this extra work. Right. Because like the expectation yeah. is I got this game. So therefore the game is going to tell me everything that I need to know. Yeah. And I mean, believe it or not, chat, like normal people do not go to external websites when they play video games. They just play the video game and they they read what's available to the available to them in the video game. And like, that's it. They don't they don't go to like external websites and that sort of thing. And I'd, I'd wager that like Guild Wars 2 in particular, because it's promoted as this like casual game or whatever. I think the player base, the majority of the player base in Guild Wars 2 doesn't do that stuff. So I think mm -hmm. it's really important having that information taught to them and fed to them within the Guild Wars 2 experience and not outside external websites, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like you said, like, you know, reward matters a lot here because it's like, yeah. even if it were available in game, you wouldn't really take your time out of the day to actually do anything about it unless you're incentivized to do so, right? Whether it's like, you know, clearing yeah. content that's difficult or maybe getting some sort of monetary reward, like gold or like materials or something like that. So it's like, even if the resources are there, if there's no incentive to actually like take advantage of those resources, then people won't, right? So it's kind For of like sure. the whole topic of today. It's like, you know, it, yeah. it, how, how do we incentivize new players and provide them the resources to do the kind of difficult content that we want Gilrissi to do? Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I, I think it's uh, well before you, but like, yeah, I'm, I just like, gotta, I just gotta I think, cut I think you I off. Start, this is my yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah now I can't go ahead. Shut up, Blue. Yeah, stop <laughs> talking. <laughs> um, I just, I, yeah, I mean, like with the April blog post, they talked about how they were going to be reverting some changes from 2014. I think a lot of those are going to be important. We're probably going to talk about a lot of those today. Um, but yeah, I think it starts with like having a solid tutorial in the actual tutorial zone that we have in the game. Like as soon as you boot up the game, you have this cool spectacle, you have the boss fight and stuff. But I think the actual tutorial, the stuff like in the end of dragons training area needs to be in the actual tutorial part of Guild Wars 2. It's crazy that it's, it's not there. And I have friends that like have been playing for ages and played one to 80 recently played Heart of Thorns and then, we did some raids and they're like, what's CC? And it's like, it's still not that clear. It's still not that clear to like most players what, um, like that CC needs to be used for break bars, you know? So yeah. Anyway, I think what I'm hearing on. is, um, you basically have to be in this very specific demographic of people that are highly engaged, engaged enough to go to out outside resources, um, to learn the fundamentals of the game. Yes, And what that does is, as somewhat alluded to, it creates a rift in the player base, a dramatic uh, skill discrepancy, which then leads to problems of communication in groups, misunderstanding of roles, um, misalignment of expectations. It, it creates a lot of hostility and problems within the community and frustration for the players that don't understand and want, perhaps, perhaps are like trying to like figure it out, but just aren't necessarily engaged enough to go to these external resources. And we're not even talking about like the stuff where, you know, might be a little bit more expected that you would engage with outside resources like raids and stuff. We're talking about the simple mm -hmm. things like break bars and what a stat does and gear. And if you don't, if you don't engage with anything outside the game, you will never understand that. Like yeah. you won't just like naturally figure that stuff out, right? It's it's very yeah. complicated, um, and it's never alluded to in the game. Like it, it's basically like, hey, look, you got this like shiny thing, and it says power on it, but yeah, uh, it's it's uh, mostly irrelevant to the to players, or at least it seems like it's irrelevant to most players. For sure, and I think it makes Guild Wars Two come across as a more shallow game than it is for new players. If they don't engage in like understanding boons and CC and that sort of stuff, it makes the game just seem like, I don't know, a, a WoW or Final Fantasy, but with less skills, you know? And I think when you understand those things, you have a, like a greater appreciation for how deep Guild Wars 2 actually is. So it's really important having that stuff up front 
because um, there's a lot of cool systems in the game. Like I think CC and break bars is so unique to Guild Wars 2 and you don't learn about it in the tutorial. And that would have been a really cool thing to come, like to just have right off the bat within that first new, new player experience, teaching them about break bars, uh, like dodging. Boons are also very unique to Guild Wars, having these sort of like universal buffs that classes have, you know, different amounts of access to. That's super cool. And that's not really like taught within the game. And it's also just not super clear in the UI what these things do and how to track them and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think there's also like a matter of expectations, right? It's kind of like, you know, people kind of expect people to know this, even though they haven't been given the resources. So when that expectation isn't met, it's just met with disappointment. It's just like filled with disappointment instead, right? Yeah. It's like if you expect new players to like know this stuff, but then they don't, then all of they're, they're basically destined to like disappoint you, right? And then when they disappoint you, then that kind of furthers the rift even more. And then the new players kind of suffer because then they have even less guidance, even less people to kind of like turn to to learn these sorts of systems. And it's like Snub, it, it, it's like Snub said, it creates a really hostile environment and i think a lot of it is just due to expectations that are kind of unreasonable because like i think it's it's very obvious right like when someone like knows the game well enough versus like a new player that's experiencing it for the first time because a new player will not have any of like the underlying like i guess like knowledge that someone who's been playing the game for a really long time might already know things that we you know we take for granted right so yeah, or indeed just knowledge from other games as well, right? You know, playing mm -hmm. stuff like RPGs or other MMOs, right? There's there's a lot of assumptions that players make. And I, I think the really tough thing for a lot of players too is that they just don't know what they don't know, right? You, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not supposed... How, how do you know that you need to understand all of these things about the game to get into this? It's, right. it's like, oh, I'm going to go play some raids. Let's go. It's time to blast, yeah. right? And you're just there. <laughs> you're in green gear. You've got no runes on. It's like random traits. Like, here we go. Let's do it. It's not going to go so well. And it is going to be very obvious. So, like... Yeah. I, I think the core component of this, and I, I kind of want to bring Sneb on this, actually, I bring Sneb on this, because I think he's going to, uh, he's going to kind of, <laughs> he's going to take the bullet here for us, right? And just yeah. really, just, just <laughs> really leap in the front of this. Shield. Right, he's going to be the meat shield here. Um, This is a question of player feedback, right? And how the game responds to the player. And this is something that Sneb has spoken about a lot, actually, and, and that's why I want to have him talk about it right now. It's this idea of the game needs to kind of push you right and it needs to tell you if you're doing well but it also needs to tell you if you're doing badly because otherwise it can't it doesn't have a mechanism for telling you about these mechanics because if it just says oh yeah this is a break bar do it right well it's not really saying okay why is that going to be a thing like why is that important or it, there's there's no consequence to it there's no actual connection um you know the, the player gets yeah. oh yeah we need to do this right oh this is good this is bad oh yeah i want to do this oh look having all these having this this stat is really good when i'm going to try and do this right there's there's no connection between those two things and this is something that guild wars 2 i think really struggles with a lot uh, and has done historically particularly in the open world and the story but uh, i think i'll just hand it over to sneb there for because I, I think he and i think you'll i think you'll enjoy this this topic yeah yeah i sometimes i feel like i beat this topic to death yeah. Uh, I, I think we yeah. really struggle with this in the Guild Wars 2 community. If if you go around and you just play the game on like a free to play account and you just go around and do stuff, you have you have nothing, right? You've got like all white gear or whatever. You've got no stats. Um, you still get through stuff with relative ease, and you always get the maximum reward. Always. Mm -hmm. There's there's never a point in which the game is like, hey, you know what? You're not quite there yet, but hey, you did okay. And here's here's a lesser reward, right? They they never give you feedback that says, hey, you actually made a mistake here. You, you never get that. I think the worst that happens in Guild Wars 2 open world is you die to a boss and you have to waypoint and walk back. But guess what? There is zero punishment and reward for that. Yeah. The, I think it's like, the, you know, oh, go sorry, go ahead. You, you finish your point and then I'll like, uh, I just I was just gonna say that and this leads to all kinds of problems with um, the experienced players not even caring about about doing well because they can go in in the last three percent of a boss and just whack it two times and get the max reward. Um, but then this leads to the players that don't necessarily know all the systems of the game or all the mechanics very well. This leads them to this sort of 
illusion that they're much better than they are. I ask people this question all the time and say, how confident are you in end game content? Or like, how experienced are you in end game content? People will be like, oh yeah, I'm pretty okay. Like I'm decent. I kind of know what I'm doing. And really they have absolutely no idea, but I, I can't be mad at them. Why would I be mad at them? They just don't know. And the only feedback they've ever gotten from the game is that they're doing really well. So they just think, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah. And kind of, I was going to jump in when you said like, you know, dying has no punishment. And I think this is really interesting because like in the past MMOs dying, you did have punishment, right? It's like you lost your gear, like players would kill you and then they would like take your stuff. So it's like, there was very much an incentive to get better so that you would avoid death in the first place. Right. But like, you know, Guild Wars 2 is designed very much with like, you know, the casual player base in mind. And because it's, you know, notoriously like, you know, catering towards the casuals, they wanted to make the user experience a lot better. Right. So then like, you know, the user experience of like dying and having to recollect your gear freaking sucks, especially if you're like a new player. Right. And so, Ellie wants like, that in Guild Wars 2. In world versus world, full loot <laughs> PvP, oh, full and loot. in wow. PvE, oh, no. if you wow. if you die to Su Won, Su Won loots you. Su Won's gonna be decked oh, out yeah. in all of the gear. She's gonna yeah, have like yeah. twenty <laughs> chalk infusions. Yeah, she's she's gonna have right. like you know sparkles all over her from all of the players that she's killed. Right. I think. I mean. I think this is an interesting point because I other MMOs that I think about like Final Fantasy and WoW and stuff. They don't really have punishment for death either. Um, and I think the only reason that they're held accountable and you realize you're doing poorly is because you're funneled into instanced PV, like instanced group content all the time. And so you have people talking to you all the time. And um, Guild Wars has a lot of like that organic grouping in the open world. But again, you don't need to say anything to each other. You don't know if you're being a good healer or not in the open world. Nobody really comments mm -hmm. on that. Um, yeah. And I think that's like, I think that's the main thing for me is that the, um, that, yeah, you're just not funneled into smaller group content where you can talk to other people and where you're actually held accountable for your actions. Um, yeah. I mean, you play the entire one to 80 experience without like, you don't have to do dungeons or anything like that, which is so different to other MMOs. Yeah. And I think like a lot of other MMOs, they kind of gate you based off of like, you know, your item level and stuff, right? It's like you yeah. literally cannot do certain dungeons until you've reached past a certain point. And I, I do kind of want to like play devil's advocate here because I, I know like, you know, this is a fundamental thing that is really, really unique to Guild Wars 2 in the sense that like, you know, you don't even need armor to be good at the game, right? Like I always use like the example of like, you know, someone with just like, you know, maybe their armor and runes and is really, really good at their class is still going to out DPS, out heal, out outperform someone who might have like a full set of perfect gear but doesn't know anything about the encounters or anything about their class whatsoever right so it's like Gilrusu has a much bigger emphasis on personal skill over you know the the stuff that you're wearing right it's like you can be like fully decked out in infusions and you're still going to do less damage you're still going to be less impactful than someone who might have the knowledge to like outpace that you know, and I think this is like, this is something that's very unique to Guild Wars 2 because Guild Wars 2, you know, has a very, like a soft trini trinity, right? It's like no one class is responsible for any one specific role. You have like tanks that heal and then you have do you have tanks that do DPS. And then also, is my camera frozen or is that just like... Oh, right now? Okay, no, okay, okay, good. it's good. I, th I think the stream is frozen for me then. But yeah, so basically what I'm trying to get at is it kind of like results in this very different perspective or very different solutions that we need to come up with for Guild Wars 2 compared to every other MMO that's currently in the genre. You know, it's like, you know, having these like difficult, like, you know, death penalties, having like, you know, eye level, it's just not a viable solution just because Guild Wars 2, like at the very, very base level was designed with a completely different sort of like mindset. So something I wanted to bring up because a lot of people listening to this might be thinking like, you know, well, eye level doesn't really work in Guild Wars 2, you know, like that we never had eye level, right? You have ascended yeah. armor and then congratulations, you can use that for the next like five, six years and then you're done, right? Or it's like, you know, after a certain point, you unlock all your traits, well, that's it. So I don't know that yeah. that's a hundred percent true, but it's mostly true because, yeah. uh, well, exactly. they don't really have item level, but like in fractals, they have agony resistance, but that's mm -hmm. like the least loved system in the entire game, right? Like I actually hate that. It's one of the reasons I don't do fractals really is I just, <laughs> I, fi I find that to be absolute tedium. Um, but 
I guess what I wanted to say is, isn't there isn't it kind of problematic that the game doesn't ever kind of stop you and be like, hey there, new adventurer. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not a good idea to go into strikes just yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I agree. I don't have I think... any masteries. Yeah. And so when you go yes. to do the laser beam thing, you won't do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're gonna <laughs> die. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a spicy take, but I think I think <laughs> there needs to be. I'm gonna get so much hate for this. I, there needs to be more gating for content, oh. like actual hard. Oh, games, because there hard. needs to be, there needs oh, to be a floor. Like there is no Huge. floor. There is zero <laughs> floor. You can literally enter strikes in all white gear. Nothing is stopping you from doing that. From like yeah, griefing your entire team with full <laughs> white gear and <laughs> like. I, they, there is no I, floor. There is no floor. There, there needs There's to be... Uh, the only time I've ever been like, holy crap, there has to be some way to like help players understand that they're not quite ready for something is when I was doing strikes and people would jump in and they would have... Obviously, they'd have like no gear, no build. Um, but then they also wouldn't have the masteries. And they'd be like, what do you mean I can't do this? I'm like, well, we're not going to be able to hit the break bars you know, if like three of you don't have the, the thing. Like, You just got to go get the mastery points. Um, yeah. But people are like, well, how come I didn't know that before I came in? I'm like, I don't, yeah. it just doesn't tell you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think that's actually, that actually hits the point. It's like, you know, there's multiple ways to like gatekeep content. And it doesn't just have to be off of like, you know, your gear and stuff. There can be like other metrics to do so. Like, for example, it, you it must have, have like. It doesn't have to be evil either. Just, exactly. Yeah. 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 It, it can, yeah. It can be like just a very soft evil. lock. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like. It's, it's kind of, it's good for like new a, players because it gives them a, a like a funnel. It gives them like, like a, a milestone. It, 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 yeah, it's like right. you, you hit exactly. milestones wow. and that allows you to progress for like, it's like, oh, you hit this. Now you can do this, right? When yeah. things are too open and you have too many options, it actually really just confuses people. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that's why like if you give people a million options. Oftentimes they get so overwhelmed. They choose nothing. <laughs> it's it's yeah. too hard to choose. Yeah. Right. I know something we like briefly talked about on Teapot stream before, but kind of like having like a tutorial strike mission almost where like, you know, NPCs are telling you what to do. That could be like another form of like a prerequisite that, you know, you have to complete that tutorial one before you even get access to like the other strike missions, just covering like very basic things. Like you need to charge up your special action key for like the uh, Ice Root Saga ones, right? Like, you know, that's like the mastery system with like the CC that you're talking about, or like maybe teaching people like, you know, these like red circles, try not to stand in them when like they appear that sort of thing i think we can already see a little bit of that happening in like seitung where there's the npcs and like the heart progress where you need to cc after or you need to cc to get heart progress you need to dodge things to get heart progress you need to like even do combo fields i thought that was really interesting how they included yeah. combo fields as like one of the ways to progress like hard progress. And I just think having some sort of just like, you know, very obvious, like, hey, here are things that you need to pay attention to would make a massive difference because it's like Teapot said, a lot of the times people don't even know what they're doing wrong. And I know there's like, th there's literally like the, the four step learning process or something like that. It's like unconscious incompetence. And then you go to conscious incompetence and then you go to conscious competence and then unconscious competence right it's like you go from like you don't know what you're doing like and you, you have no idea that you're doing something wrong to the point where you can do things correctly without even thinking about it because you've been through that entire learning cycle you know and it's like I think you know having players even initiate that first step to go from you don't know what you're doing wrong to here are things that you can do to get better that's a step that's missing and I think this game yeah. a lot you need that like baseline knowledge right like you need to mm -hmm. have those like skill checks in the game so that so that arena net as well know what the actual skill floor for guild wars 2 is because i mean the disparity is enormous in guild wars 2 mm -hmm. and i think it's like in particular a problem with guild wars 2 as opposed to any other mmo it's huge i think there are there are, there are two things here because we want to try and communicate some of this stuff to the player and I think we kind of teased out two options here. One, yeah. we have to modify the open world to somehow do this. Or two, it has to there has to be some level of instance content that is not optional. Those yes. are the two things there. And you know what? I would lean more towards the open world option. That would be my personal preference, actually. I you know, okay. I I think I'd probably lean towards the the SNEB 
direction, which is stuff like, oh, you know, if you do a fight really well, the game tells you you did a really good job, right? Like, oh, you, you only got yeah. hit three times. That was really good during this world boss. Or, um, you know, you revived 17 people. That was really good. You know, good job. You, that was, you know, imagine, nice, okay. right? Like, I, I think that kind of, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh. Imagine, imagine if you had like, like a trophy case or like, oh, like Pokemon badges, but for world oh. bosses. And you got a gold badge if you like never got hit by a mechanic. Imagine how close people would <laughs> pay attention to the mechanics then, right? They're like, I gotta get yeah. the gold badge. Like, I, I gotta. <laughs> and they could like ping it and it would like, like it would turn legendary when they, and then it would like give them like some novel little animation thing, like a rainbow. I don't know. It would be like really cool. And ev everybody would want it, right? Like everybody would the learn old, all of the mechanics. All gold <laughs> badges, only LFGs. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, imagine the LFG. No right. getting hit by mechanic group only. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. no. no I, I, I think you make a good point, Teapot. No, for sure. Like, um, but I disagree with you. Oh. Uh, and I oh. think that it should be the opposite. The, the, I, should, I think it should be the second option, which is that you should funnel people into instance content. Mm -hmm. I don't think the open world being... I, I, would, I would love the open world to be more challenging overall, but I think that's a way, way more difficult change for ArenaNet to make over just reusing what they have, which is the dungeons, um, and making them as part of the main story that you have to do and then you can implement those teaching mechanics within those story dungeons mm. i thought dungeons were like spaghetti though like i thought if you if you like <laughs> accidentally removed something in dungeons that it would like delete <laughs> pvp well i guess uh, <laughs> i think they've changed stuff in dungeons before right like they can do, <laughs> definitely do that didn't they add break bars and that sort of thing before uh, Maybe they like, they I did. It, I thought it took like six neurosurgeons for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I, I think there are a few things at play here. Like the first of which is that I think the player, but the game right now is set up where everything is optional, right? Like nothing is mandatory in the entire game. So if yeah. you shifted it over to you have to do this, and you, well, it would be okay if they made it soloable. I think they'd have to make it soloable. So in other words, you'd have like these strike missions and dungeons but they'd have to be scalable to one player a bit like a dragon response mission actually is how they'd have to look and that would probably be a good amount of work to do and you could do that um as well but i do think that if they made that shift it would probably cause a bit of friction with the community and and in a way it would be it almost seems like it would be a, a very challenging thing to do because you'd have to go through all this content and make sure that it's expressing mechanics right which is there's yeah. a lot of content to go through and kind of make sure that it's actually doing something and you're, you're going to learn from this um right. a little bit more whereas i think if you do it in the open world it's a bit softer in a way right and and maybe that will not force people to learn as much but i'm not sure if arena really want to kind of force people to learn you know they it is definitely a challenging game but i don't think they want to go you know what with the Dark Souls MMO, okay? You know, you got to get good, otherwise you're going to be hard set. You're never going to make it to the story, right? You're just there forever. You can you, you, know, you cannot break through. You know, Joko wins, right? Like, there's an alternate storyline where Joko wins and the entire world is turns undead, right? And you join his harem or something like that, okay? <laughs> because you can't beat the boss. You just lose. Um, you know, oh, yeah, Kralgator blows up the world because you, you fail. You can't beat him, ever. Unlucky. But I think that um, the open world stuff, is really good because it allows this kind of slightly softer environment where you can you can do really really badly um and your team can kind of carry you and it's it's going to be quite cozy uh but you can also like get some real feedback on this stuff that could be applied everywhere because what we want to try and express to people that this is this is what i think to really kind of get to the the true center of what we're talking about we want to make sure that the game is expressing the core mechanics effectively to the player base and what is that well you want to talk about damage you want to talk about healing you want to talk about boon application you might want to talk about condi cleanses revives defiance bar breaking like it, we want to very much like push these mechanics because these mechanics are how the game works right and you know like <laughs> i don't know i don't want to say like you you get to a weird point there because oh th this this one got weird um <laughs> this got weird and seb you're gonna love this you are gonna love this in fact you know what this might be it um this might be the breaking point 
for Snub. So I'm sorry if you're a Snub <laughs> fan. He might quit the game after this. I had a conversation on YouTube and uh, on, on you know on YouTube and, and on Twitter as well. It was a two. It was a double conversation. And I was talking to someone and they and I was saying, oh, you know, like I think players should learn the core mechanics of the game. You know, like reviving DPS. And the the play, Someone said to me, that shouldn't matter. And and at that point, like, where do I go? Like, what what? <laughs> I don't understand why to take the conversation over that. Because I'm saying, well, you know, learning the game mechanics in the video game is a good idea so you can play the game more effectively and, you know, kind of get what you want and accomplish your goals. And then people just turned around and said, uh, that shouldn't be necessary. There is no reason um, for people to have to learn the game. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> what? I, mean, I, think, I think that's interesting because, I like, <laughs> what you're saying is, like... Who really cares if um, the players in the open world aren't doing that well? I mean, we we are having this discussion because people are frustrated that people entering instanced PVE content um, are not accustomed to that style of play, right? Like we don't we don't really notice or care that much in the open world if the guy next to us isn't doing max DPS. The only like the Su One scenario basically just put this on a pedestal and show that this was a problem but like really what we're talking about is like people having trouble getting into the instanced pv pve content and what you're saying about like important things to know like reviving dps and that sort of thing you won't learn that in the open world even if it is difficult like you're you're not going to be running around with another dps dude as a healer or anything like that the the way you learn that is in in the instance pve content like dungeons where your DPS dies, and you're like, shit, I gotta go help him up. That sort of thing. So I feel like if we want people to be better at instance PvE content in the in end game, you need to, like, force people into that within the story. And I think it's interesting, because this is a very, like, Guild Wars 2-centric problem, not being forced into P instance PvE content. And if we're, to if we're talking about, like, brand new players coming into Guild Wars 2 that have come from other MMOs and stuff like that, being, like, forced into dungeons instant PvE content, that's, like, really normal and that's that's really comfortable for mmo players they're always looking forward to the next dungeon and it's interesting that it's like a very guild wars 2 problem that if we introduced that kind of system that guild wars 2 players would be upset but i think current guild wars 2 players are already at the end game anyway so i don't think it really impacts them it only impacts the new players um and so yeah i mean would, would we rather that the open world feel too challenging uh, for a solo player, or would we rather the open world be kind of okay, and then they have to do instance PVE every now and then, and they've got to like actually learn their role in the instance PVE content? Yeah, that, that's actually something really interesting. So I'm going to hone in on one thing that you said, which mm. is like you know prioritizing sort of like the solo player experience. I was literally watching a YouTube video last night. Highly recommend to other people that it kind of talked about like the history of MMOs. And originally, when MMOs first came out, they were expected to be extremely difficult, right? Like you know they kind of followed like the whole like Dark Souls sort of like formula, where it's like you know you cannot do this unless you group with other people and you perform really well. And like a lot of the open world bosses, like you know you need to like hammer at them for like hours right you need to clear things you need to prep things and it was difficult right but the part of the reason why the mmo sphere has become so popular over the past few, like you know few decades is because it's become more accessible like not just accessible to like you know people with like disabilities and that sort of thing but accessible to the average player that might not have the time to invest into this stuff so you see a massive shift from like you know challenging gameplay to overall accessibility and prioritizing like the solo player experience because the solo player experience is like you know it gets you money right because there are people that come to the game and then when people come to your game they spend money and when they spend money then you get more content and then more content means more players and it creates this sort of like positive feedback loop right but as a result it kind of creates this sort of perception that now like forced group play is extremely problematic Right. And now it's like, you know, since you've created this culture in which people kind of want to be able to do things on their own, play at their own pace, you know, I, I completely acknowledge, you know, you know, like if you're just playing the game and you're minding your own business, nobody should really care whether you're like performing or not. Right. Because your actions only impact yourself. But then when that kind of starts having 
bigger consequences, right? Like you accidentally stumble onto a meta or maybe you need to like do the story for like, you know, the turtle or you need to do the strike mission for the turtle. Then now all of a sudden your own solo gameplay is now directly affecting a lot of people around you, right? So it's like, yeah. it's kind of like, I just wanted to really like hone in on that because I think this is something that we've kind of seen both ends of the extreme for, where you've seen extremely difficult content in the older MMOs, like, you know, EverQuest and stuff. And with the newer MMOs kind of having this emphasis on like, you know, you're basically playing the game together alone, right? You're, you're playing by yourself with like a bunch of other people. And because of that, it makes it extraordinarily difficult to balance what is considered you know, the game's responsibility to make people want to get better? And what is our responsibility as the community to give people the resources for doing so? Because when I've been running the Dragon's End meta, which I'm just going to use that as the example, because that's easily like the most difficult piece of open world content currently in the game, right? It's like, I have to type, I have a copy pasta that's almost half a page long on like, you know, the core mechanics, like what is CC? What is stacking? Why do you need to like stay close? Well, it's because boons are like applied based off of proximity. Right. And I've had people whisper me, they're like, I never knew this because I, I never needed to. They never needed to know this in open world. But now that they know it, now it's like, you know, you've kind of bridged that gap a little bit between like, you know, the newer players and the more veteran players. And because of that, now you can have this more difficult content without having the like the negative impact of like, I guess, like solo player gameplay. You know, and it, it was very totally. much the community that drew that. that. That wasn't, you know, the game, like, telling people, hey, you need a CC here. As the community, or, like, you know, not just myself, but many other people, by providing these resources and, like, you know, kind of, like, screaming it out mm -hmm. into the void, we managed to get a couple more people that kind of, like, are willing to kind of abandon that sol solo player mindset. And so. you know what? Um, this is a little of a bit of an aside. Oh. Mm -hmm. As much as open world players <laughs> might hate to admit this. Oh, no. <laughs> The average player has improved since and that is true. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, shit. Because it, it's absolutely true. Absolutely. Because they were presented yeah. with a difficult challenge and they were told to overcome it. And many players rose to the challenge. And even even ArenaNet said that in their blog post. And it's because of people like Emmy, you know, educating people in the community, commanders coming in saying like, hey, we can do this. This is what you need to do to get this done. Um, and then players getting punished for losing, right? Like you, yeah. you lose, it feels bad. And then you're like, holy crap, what do I do to get better? And then you've got commanders, you've got mentors, leaders are like, okay, like this is how we're going to fix this is what we're going to do. And players are like, well, if I don't do this, we're going to lose. So I better learn what this means. And they learn it. And the next time they go in and they do really well, there's incentive to improve. And they've gotten better as a result. And the win rate has gone from with some nerfs, granted, but 15% to 60%. Yeah. And it's only going to get better, right? It's like, it's only going to get better. Yeah. Like, I, I agree that it's, uh, that Su1 definitely helped. I don't know that it was the main reason, though. I actually think that having the tutorial at the start of End of Dragons that taught people about CC and mm -hmm. combo fields and dodging, that combined with the fact that you have to do a strike, like a proper 10-man strike to get the turtle, even if you circumvent Suwon and you just you buy the, the turtle thing and you can just unlock it through the collection, you still have to do a strike. And that strike really punishes players that have no idea what to do like that new kind of strike is really punishing and i think that's actually more of, of well, more of the reason that players now are getting better at the game is because they they needed to overcome that 10 man instance content um to be able to get their turtle but but you know what is what's uh, I feel like I'm going on this massive tangent with this, but you know what bothers <laughs> me about, about how they changed the turtle? I, not that it was a bad thing. I think it was probably the right move. But I imagine that the logic of having the turtle behind the Dragon's End meta was to introduce people to some difficult content in sort of a slope so that when they went to oh. instance content, they were slightly more prepared. But now because you can skip that process, they go into strikes at super unprepared and they just encounter the same problem, but in a different medium. Oh yeah, it, all it does is it, it kicks the can down the road. Um, yeah. th this is why I think the open, the open world needs to introduce this stuff. Because one of the biggest problems in Guild Wars 2 
is that the gap from open world and story to literally anything else is night and day, right? You will go from the story. Like, I always like telling this because it amuses me. There are some, in fact, there are a lot of instances in the Guild Wars 2 story that will not let you lose. It's actually impossible yeah. <laughs> yeah. to lose, right? If you die, you instantly respawn. The boss doesn't reset, right? It, you, you cannot lose. So when you have, when you go from a, a boss that is so easy that the developers coded it so it can't ever win, it's not even possible unless the, you just disconnect somehow, to something that can fail or has a fail state, it's going to seem horrible. It's going to be like, whoa, what is this? This, this is terrible. Like, I don't <laughs> like this. This sucks. So I think the open world needs to introduce this. So I, I think... Um, I don't think I do. I do think that they shouldn't have locked the t look. The community wasn't ready for that, right? Like that's. I, I don't. I don't mind the the concept of it. Like for example, I um I think something that could be cool, right? Like uh, you know how um, Dragon Stand. If you beat Dragon Stand uh, or the final encounter rather in Dragon Stand in less than twenty five minutes, I don't know what it is exactly. You got this little vendor, right? And you can exchange some uh, map currency for some loot every day. Um, that was, a, that used to be like a prestige item. Wooden Potatoes made a video. He was like, yeah, dude, look, I've got it. Do you have it? Yeah, I bet you don't. Okay. It was a prestige item back in the day. Um, and that's pretty cool. Like if there was something like that, I think that would be an incentive. So, you know, you could, think you could get some chair. value out of it. I, or, or some I kind of, or, like or just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, I, I don't think new players give a shit about that stuff at all and i i actually i think they got the order mixed up i think they right like when we did when dragon's end came out we wanted people to be running instance pve content builds mm -hmm. and i think they got the order mixed up in that you're asked to do a 50 man version of an instance pve fight like you need P instance pve comps and builds to do that open world stuff. And I think the, they got the order mixed up and that they should be doing the strikes and dungeons and stuff first because I'm sure we could all agree that if you're like, if you're good at the instance PVE content, you'll be good at the open world stuff too. Whereas mm -hmm. the other way around doesn't necessarily apply because you're not always playing with a party with a healer and boon providers and DPS and that sort of thing. So I think it's really hard to, I mean, well, I know I'm harping on this point, but I feel like, it's really hard to ask ArenaNet to rework a whole entire, like the core map and all of the enemies in that and have and have ArenaNet teach players through that over just getting them good at instance PvE content first. And then just like as a consequence, they'll be better at the open world PvE. I think I'm kind of on the fence here because I, I kind of lean more towards what Teapot said, where I kind of prefer the open world stuff to be more difficult because open world stuff, you don't need to do it, right? Like if you, if you think about it, you know, the turtle's cute and everything, but technically you don't need to like complete it or anything like that. It was on the box, so Emmy. Having... I need it. <laughs> it all over every piece of marketing, yeah. I mean, if, if I don't Yeah, okay, well, I mean, I agree. I think <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm mostly talking like tech. I'm just trolling. I'm like trolling, okay, but, don't yeah. worry. So I, I think like, you know, Open world, it's more easily avoidable, right? It's like, if you don't like it, just don't show up at that time. Kind of like, you know, mind your own business thing. And for me, for this is very much a personal thing. I feel like it's so epic. You know, it's like going into like a map with like 50 other people and like, you know, having that opportunity. It's just it. I, I remember the first time I did Dragon's End. Okay, I crashed out the first time. So the second time that I did Dragon's End, it was epic, right? I, I hadn't had a feeling like that in any other game I've ever played in my life. I feel like Guild Wars 2, the way it was structured, is the only type of game that can facilitate those sorts of open world encounters. So this might very well just like, you know, be being selfish, but I personally would love if like the community could get like their overall skill level to the point where Anet feels more comfortable introducing this type of content into the game. And obviously, like, I don't think the solution needs to be one or the other. Like, you know, these two aren't mutually exclusive things. You can introduce, yeah, like, you know, strike missions earlier. And like, maybe, for example, in order to progress past the story, you need to do like some sort of mini strike mission, right? It's like, you know, just like as a story, like kind of like giving players a nudge in that direction. And then after they've done that, you know, that mini strike mission that might just, it might just be like the Ice Golem, right? From Ice Boots Saga. Just something super easy, super straightforward. Very, very unlikely that you're going to like, fail and then then you kind of push them towards like a really big large scale fight and i think also 
I think the game would benefit from having more. You know, maybe not like quite at the epic scale of Suwon, but like I feel like a lot of the other metas, like you know, like in Echo Vault and Seitung, it's pretty difficult to fail them unless you're like actively on like a map and you joined it like 20 minutes late and everyone's already funneled into like the other metas. Unless there's some sort of extenuating circumstance like that, I feel like the other metas feel just like a slap on the wrist you know like if those difficulties were maybe increased a little bit more i feel like it would have been a more natural progression you know so so to like loop things back because i think i think everyone's said their piece on like dragon's end and stuff like that i <laughs> think i think we're jumping the gun a little bit talking about end of dragons content which is level 80 content True. um <laughs> you know i feel like we need to talk more about the one to 80 experience because that's what people that's what brand new players are going to be experiencing first um and as much as and i love people to just jump, mm -hmm. right right exactly and i think we should talk about that a lot because that's like that's the big thing that's 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 where players get tested and um number one thing wanna, like continue playing the game Do, that we're locking this in that we're not even, we're not even going to argue about it okay <laughs> when you level one to 80 by the time you hit level 80 you should have the same gear that you get from the boost. I agree. Uh, yep. There yep. it is. 100%. Okay. I know, Full uh, set I... of exotic, celestial, divinity rune or some bullshit. I don't care. Right? Yeah. Just pfft, done. Easy. You, you said I that the I other day, and I, I, yeah. al I almost agree, because um, I really like the celestial set, and all my friends that are jumping in for the first time with full celestial, I can you know suggest so many builds for celestial. Um, but I actually think the gearing from 1 to 80, it needs to have more stat-selectable stuff. Um, and you need to be able to gear for... Like, you can't get Harrier gear between 1 to 80, right? Unless I'm mistaken. You can't build into healing, like, to just being a healer, which is what you're going to be doing at the actual end game. Um, I think they need to allow for, like, more stat-selectable stuff on the way up to 80. And either that, or give you those options where it's... Um, you know, they show you they've got Berserkers, Vipers, Harrier, um, Diviners maybe, or something like that. Um, and also, I think there's too many stat combos in the game now. And like 75% of them people don't use, and they're just there as like a trap for new players. Where they could, like, If they got a stat-selectable piece of gear, there's so much there that they'll just end up picking the wrong stat. And I think they need to be filtered as well. We have so many stat combos, and you scroll down the list... And you have no idea what all this stuff does, and they need to have they need to have like little tabs and be on a like his condi gear, his here like support gear, you know, like there's too many. I, I think... actually like that oh. idea a lot. I, I was gonna say I like that idea a lot. Just even sectioning them out because I think the closest example to that that we have right now is like um with like the raid gear, right? You have like assaulters and militias mm. and like healers and defenders. They have already sectioned them out a little bit, you know. And oh, if, I hate if, that. <laughs> I, it's annoying when you get like the wrong right. set and stuff, oh, but it does very gosh. much create that distinction, right? And it's like, yeah. you know, the individual stats underneath all of the assaulters, for all intents and purposes, for people that are in open world, they're very similar, right? It's like, it really won't matter all that much, you know? But like the right. difference between an assaulter set of gear versus let's say like a healer set of gear is night and day. Right. So it's yeah. like even creating like a little bit of divide there, maybe like earlier in the game so people can like acknowledge like, oh, there's a stat that gives me extra healing power or, oh, there's a stat that gives me extra power. And like, oh, I had no idea that there was like a difference in power versus condition damage. You know, it's like I think having that distinction early, especially since they already exist in the game, would benefit the new player population a lot. Yeah, mm. I think um, by level 80, they should be in the build. I think they should have the build that they have been you know, going for since level one, really. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I have, maybe this is a hot take, but I do not <laughs> like the idea of having a billion different items that that categorize stats. I, and I don't think that's what you're saying necessarily. I just want to make yeah. this very clear that that yeah. sucks. <laughs> it's very confusing for players because they're like assaulters, defenders, like what do all of these mean? And there's, oh, there's different stats under them, but some of them have the same stat as the other one. Like, I don't get it, right? Like, they, it's, it's too much, and it makes it more difficult to gear a character because when you get drops in raids and other places and you only have one type of stat that you can pick, if you don't need another healer, then you're screwed, right? So what you need is everything to be pretty stat-selectable. Like, yeah. this might be a little bit of an aggressive take, 
But if oh, everything agree. was just stat selectable, like ascended items at least, then yeah. I think life would be a whole lot easier because people would be able to just pick the thing the thing they need. And maybe it's only ascended things that drop to be specific. So it doesn't like ruin crafting or anything. But like <laughs> if I got if I got like a ring that dropped, it would just be stat selectable. Yeah. And I then think, right. yeah. <laughs> I don't I think, so if much nothing easier. else, I imagine Anit would probably be pretty like receptive to this sort of idea because they already changed like the unidentified gear system, right? Like before you used to get like an inventory full of like random stats and who has time to look over like every single combination of stats, right? But they kind of like combine that all into a single unidentified gear. And if they have the resources to like, you know, combine things, they probably also would be able to have the resources to maybe like create very small like distinctions between them or like change the, how stats work in the first place right it's like when you click on an unidentified gear it gives you like an item or something like that and then maybe then you can select between like all of the different stats you know yeah i, I gotta add something else because i oh. know the chat is angry about this Wait. oh, <laughs> yes. oh yeah yeah I, I realize i i promise i understand that you can stat swap ascended stuff but you can't stat yeah, swap no. all ascended stuff which is very confusing for the player <laughs> And I will also add that many players don't know that you can yes. stat swap ascended stuff. And so the problem yeah. is that people get the item and they're like, ah, oh, and then they never use it <laughs> because yeah. like, I'm, I'm dead serious. I think we take for granted the knowledge we have a lot. I yeah. know that stat swapping ascended stuff is relatively inexpensive and not very difficult or time consuming, but most players have no idea it even exists. And yeah. so if if we take that into account, we're just we're just oh. adding levels and Dude. levels of depth yeah. and oh. complexity for the, gearing, yeah. right? This is putrid. This is honestly one of those putrid things about Guild yes. Wars 2. Um, yes. is the, the fact that the game is like unplayable if you don't uh, open like 14 fucking wiki pads, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah. like, like yeah. It, it's, it's actually really funny. I, a, a Final Fantasy player um, messaged me the, the other day and, and they said that they, they're they raiding, um, they're like blasting ultimate, savage, right? In, in Final Fantasy, all this crazy stuff. Um, and they said, I can't even get into raids because I have to like research a million different things in guild wars 2 <laughs> whereas in farm fantasy you just go right you just start playing yeah. and the game just like does it yeah. all for you in guild wars 2 you got to be looking at that you gotta look at this you know you, you're getting like meme gate kept as well right out of this like you have to yeah. look at the wiki so much more um and th there's there's something that uh, about the whole gearing thing i, I think you guys are kind of in, in a way i'm calling you out i, I think that you're kind of skirting around the issue here a little bit I, I think the issue is is that um players have no idea what the stats actually do and how it relates oh, yeah, to no their clue. build, right? We're just making and, it even and, harder to learn and, if and we well, add well, like a million different names for them. I, I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I think, I, you know, I think you'd be actually surprised. Um, but what I think needs to happen is the game needs to kind of suggest what stats you should use or the type of stats you should use. And nope. uh, you know what? You know, I too actually hard. think it should. I, no, I think it's. I think it's too I, hard. I, I don't. I, I actually. I don't too many variables. variables. You can do it with weapons. Too many you can. You no. can do it with weapons. You can. You absolutely can. Um, no. for example, oh. if if you if you're playing ne if you're playing necromancer <laughs> and you've got a scepter, it can go. You know what? That's a condi weapon, buddy. Right? If you're okay, playing greatsword on. On warrior, what, what, you know what? Yeah. But it's a like power scourge thing. Okay. What about, world, and what right? about what about Condi <laughs> Reaper, right? Like Condi Reaper uses what great sword, right? And there's no Condi on the great sword. It wouldn't always work, but it would always give you a right answer. It wouldn't give you every right answer. It would give you a right answer. So I, if you I were think, playing mm -hmm. Reaper, it would say power, right? Because great sword is a is fundamentally a power weapon to an extent. Um, I think what we're discovering here is that trying to decide where the line is between telling a player what to do or what they might or the, what they should do, giving them a suggestion or a recommendation, and then where the player should try to discover on their own, that line is very difficult in Guild Wars 2 because yeah. there are so many variables and options. Because um, whenever somebody's asking me, like, Snib, what should I play? I like cringe, I, like don't even know how to answer that because yeah. like, well, where do we begin? Like, yeah, yeah. A hundred years ago, <laughs> like how do, yeah. you could give them like the whole history of Tyria and why they should play a certain thing in a certain context, but there, there's just too many options. And I, I and, think, 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, again, that makes Guild Wars 2 seem more shallow if the game is in, like literally saying, you've equipped this weapon, so equip this um, stat set. And I think what Guild Wars 2 really needs is like, I think, I think players are smart enough. Players that have come from RPGs and other MMOs are smart enough to build craft. And all they need is the tools to be able to yeah. see, to have a link between what the stats do and like what the gear that they're getting. And I think that like Guild Wars 2 doesn't have that like, you know, um, stat comparison sheet when you hover over a piece of gear that says like, here's what your Condi damage is now. And here's what it will be with this piece of gear, you know? Hear me out. I actually think so. If you look at the actual stats, there's not too many of them, right? It's like you, it, even like if you look at the infusions, like the plus five, plus nine infusions, there's only eight different total stats. I think where a lot of the confusion comes in is where those combinations are, right? It's like you might have power, precision, like ferocity, and then you might have like power, precision, ferocity, and then toughness, right? It, it's just like it's. I don't think it's actually the stats that are very confusing. I think it mm. is the combinations of stats that is very overwhelming because all you see is just alphabet soup, right? So if, okay, I'm not saying like, you know, this is the solution. This is more of just like, you know, a thought experiment. Like people can use this as food for thought. But imagine if, let's say like lower tier gear, you could choose the stats, but you could only choose between four of them, right? And each one of them kind of like has like the major stats, right? Like, you know, power yeah. is definitely very, very different from toughness, right? So different gear that you select, it wouldn't have all of the combinations of them, but you could choose yeah. between specific subsets. And I think like, you know, lower tier gear might have very easy lines to differentiate between, right? Like if you get pick up green gear, maybe you can only choose between four different subsets. And then as you kind of ramp up and everything, you know, you get to ascended gear, maybe you get even more options to choose between, right? Because when you're kind right, of yeah. getting to like higher tier content, that's where you're min-maxing. Like nobody cares if you have a 100% crit chance in your level 10 story, right? Like nobody yeah. cares about that stuff. But yeah. when you get to higher tier, like, you know, raids and fractal content, it does start mattering, right? Like, you know, that little yeah. bit of extra, like, healing, that little bit of extra crit chance, it makes a pretty significant difference if all 10 people are doing there. But I don't see why there needs to be this complexity when the game is very fundamental. You could even argue, again, this might be a very hot take. Imagine if only certain, like, stat combinations were available on Legendary Armor, right? It's like, imagine with Ascended Gear, you only had access to... Berserkers. Again, this is a hot take. I'm not saying only should, Berserker. Saying, uh, yeah, imagine okay. like, vitality like, not allowed. <laughs> okay, okay, no, 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 I don't mean it that way. But like, I'm, I'm trying uh -oh. to make a distinction between like power, precision, ferocity. They only had the Berserkers version of that, right? But Assassins is basically Berserkers, except with more precision. They're effectively the same stat, except one has more weight on one specific stat than another one. And let's say you know, Berserkers is only available on Ascended. And then Assassin's I, and Berserkers is available on Legendary. Again, I, I, I'm not saying yeah, this is a solution. I, mean, I just want to offer, you know, I, that's that's. I was I mean. really, I was really loving your like previous idea of limiting <laughs> it more when they're lower level and introducing more stat ses, sets as they get higher level. Like, I think that's great because by the time, like, by the time Assassin's gear is introduced, the player's already probably decked out in Berserkers. And they can see mm -hmm. that Assassins is basically the same, except it's going to give them more crit chance. And they'll be able to exactly. like, like build craft through that. Uh, um, I and I do also, that. Yeah, oh, I, again, I, I'm oh, not saying this is not? the solution. I just want to give it as like, you know, a, a thought experiment, right? Because it's like when you're a newer player, whether or not you have that extra 5% crit chance really doesn't matter, right? But as you're getting yeah. into harder and harder content, you're more and more familiar with the game mechanics. And as you become more familiar with the game mechanics, you have better knowledge to make that decision, right? You can okay. decide whether or not you want that. I, I think I'm misunderstanding this. Mm -hmm. Are you saying during the leveling process? Because that already kind of exists. I would extent? say between green, blue, yellow, exotic, and ascended. So not even by level, but by the specific type of gear you're wearing. I so like let's say, only. Exactly. Oh, like imagine oh, if only that's, green that's, gear. Yeah. Like imagine if green it was like gear. Really you can simple. Only choose, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, green yeah. gear. You yeah, can uh -huh, only choose uh -huh. between four stats, that and is then. Big. Rare, you can choose between eight stats. Huge. That's and then big exotic, brain. you can choose between 16 stats. Big. And then ascended, because at this point, it's like, realistically, if you're getting into raids, you're looking towards yeah. ascended gear. You know, like, I, I would argue most people looking to get into raids are not wearing green gear. 
You know, so by the time you're looking into the, like information in order to do raids, you're probably already pretty familiar with like the overall sort of like game system, you know? So then you yeah, have yeah. the knowledge to be able to choose, okay, I want Berserkers versus Assassins. But like a player that's only playing with green gear and <clears throat> open run, they don't care about the, that distinction, right? It's not necessary for their gameplay. Yeah, so. I would. Uh, the only thing I would amend to that is I would cap it at exotic. So yeah, um, yeah, that, that could be another option. Yeah, yeah the right. the reason for that is because I like I well, and this is just total bias, but I like that people can jump into raids quickly by buying yes. exotic gear off the trading post and by yeah, getting like stat that selectable exotic gear. Mm -hmm. so the, I, mean, I wouldn't want to limit you that. Can't, you can't get every slot off the trading post stat selectable. You can only get some. And it's very weird. Like new players will have no idea what the stat selectable pieces. I think they should just. Set, the I, I think you should just is... be able to buy them. Like you should just be able to buy. They should add more stuff like that to the game flat out. Um, I think as we should just like. Uh, maybe I'm like all the economists will hate me, but like honestly, I'd I'd like to see them just have like all kinds of ways to get it from strikes, both kinds of strikes, just. Super cheap, stat selectable, exotic yes. gear. Super cheap. Yes. Yeah. Super, this super is what cheap. I, like, this is what I ha made a whole video about the fact that, like, stat selectable exotic gear is so tricky. And so it's really hard for new players, brand new players that are not using external resources, to understand where to get their gear to build into the role they want. Because stat selectable gear is, like, all over the place. It's like this three or four specific items you can buy off the trading post the rest you get from verdant brink in heart of thorns um it's just like a mess and it really needs to be streamlined there needs to be like if they're going to have a content ramp up if they're going to have fractal strikes raids whatever there needs to be a gear ramp up with that and allow you to fully gear up in exotics before you jump into raids and strikes which is just kind of like tricky and all over the place right now i still think that the i agree with all this i think emmy's idea is nine head actually yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yes. big, big brain big brain because yeah. i've been playing yeah. other games so, okay other games yeah. primarily meaning lost dark i've been playing a lot of lost dark i should just Ooh. say that so yeah, like was... lost dark with their like tier one gear you only have access to a single stat on tier one gear and then tier two gear you then get access to two of them Right. So it's like yeah. it, it, I saw someone kind of mentioning like, you know, deception. And I, I just want to make it very clear. Like, you know, I can understand why it would be perceived that way. Emmy but the I want to make it very clear. <laughs> I don't want it to be seen as deceptive. I want it to be seen as there. It's very unfair to overwhelm people with information yes. when they're first starting the game. I think it becomes overwhelming. People kind of like, you know, brain fart. Like I still do this. Like if people just start screaming information at me, I just, freeze, <laughs> right. It's just, I freeze and I can't, I can't process anything. Right. I just think it's very unfair to be throwing so much information, especially considering how action-based Guild Wars 2's combat is. And just to add, you know, even more salt to the wound. I think all you need is time. No, nobody's saying you're not allowed to have this information. I think as long as you have time to like digest the information, I think it makes the entire learning process much easier. You know, I still it's, think, it's, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we yeah. haven't gone far enough. I think that, you know, all this stuff is great, but I still think I, you have to nudge people towards mm. a good answer. And I think you do that with stuff like weapons. It's a bit harder with boons, I think. Uh, but mm. certainly with weapon skills, I think, you know, look, this is another hilarious story. It was, it was epic, actually. I did a, I'm sure you were all familiar with Freezy, the Winter's Day Strike mission. I did a I've full public that. run, public run pugs. And everyone died except for me <laughs> and a Chronomancer. And I was like, oh, it's okay, right? The Chronomancer will give me quickness. I'm playing Necro. We got this. No problem. Yeah. He did... 400 dps okay 400 and he didn't Sorry. give quickness at all and i asked him what gear he has and by the way it took us 47 minutes to kill it i didn't give up i did not reset <laughs> it took us 47 minutes <laughs> he said i am full condition damage full he said full damage so he was full, full dps damage. with 400 dps <laughs> okay yep 
because they just don't yeah. know, right? I mean, he that happens to me he had no all idea. the time. He had no raids. idea. He just, didn't, he just didn't understand, right? Like, the, the way it was. Like, And I think for players that are really new, especially players who are new to RPG concepts, it should go, hey, right? The weapon you have right now is a weapon that does mostly condition damage. So you should probably have condition damage gear, or it might be a good idea to have that. Or, um... You could even do it with, like, support weapons. Like, it would be really hard to do this all the time. And you'd have to kind of pigeonhole a few weapons to do this. But you could say, hey, you've got Guardian Staff. That's a support weapon. Like, maybe you want to heal your allies and give them boons, right? And is that going to give you a perfect answer? No. But the thing is, it would get you to engage with the mechanics so that you get, like, a decent answer. And then you can move from there. I completely agree that it's almost... Im it, well, no, not almost impossible. It is impossible possible to do this in Guild Wars 2 because there's no trinity system there's no like oh you're a healer you're a dps you're a tank right that's not how the game works but you can you can give people a right answer and then after they've learned about the game a bit more then they can go oh shit you can do this as well right, for example uh, i think you know people were pointing out necro scepter it's quite right for example in world versus world you play necromancer as a power class with a scepter um, and in Guard, funny enough, you do with Guardian too. Um, you actually play DPS Guard with Staff, Staff, which is a support weapon, right? But the thing is, you give them a correct answer, right? That they can investigate and, and engage with a little bit there. Um, rather than like every single answer. Because I think kind of going through, oh, well, you know, if you want to learn the game, you're going to have to look at the wiki and look at the scaling. And then, oh, you want to think about all of this. It's a little bit too much. Just point, just like give you a little nudge in the right direction. And I think that could be done just by saying, hey, this weapon works this certain way. Or, oh, these abilities that you've got, they apply loads of boons. Did you know you can extend their duration using concentration? That sounds pretty cool, right? Um, oh, look, the weapon you've got has healing on it. You know, you can increase that healing by using healing power your gear right all that type of stuff is it going to be perfect is it going to give people like the the perfect build no but i think it will draw people's attention to the way that their gear and weapons interact um this is the to me that's kind of the thing we're, we're attacking right now is how do we create this connection between the player's kind of play style <clears throat> and abilities and the choices they make when building their character you make them matter you make them you make them salient right like that that's that's the thing is right now they don't matter at all like it, it's irrelevant to the average player none of your gear matters there are literally people walking around with the starter dagger with like some omega gem store skin on it with no stats you, you know what's and interesting all of the Right? Because they don't, it doesn't matter. They have all their masteries. They, like, they've been able to clear everything without any consequence to that. I in, think some, maybe... and in some ways, that's a positive thing, right? But in other ways, it's like, well, th they've never had to engage with any of the like, foundational systems of combat in the game. And that feels really weird. Right? Yeah, I think playing a little bit of devil's advocate here, I, like you said, it's like, you know, in some ways that's very good for the game. So you, to be able to kind of log in without really needing to worry about doing your research is a much more relaxing experience than like figuring mm -hmm. out every tiny little thing. You know, like a lot of people play this game just to like kick back and relax. I think if we're talking about this, I think we're very much kind of branching into the realm of accessibility, right? Like not just like, you know, accessibility again, not just for like, you know, disabilities, but just accessibility of information where if, if we had to like, you know, think how are we going to put this into the game where a lot of people would see it with very little like, you know, intrusion into their actual gameplay. I think that's the answer that we're trying to target here, right? It's like, how do we get this information to the player without intruding on their time playing this game, right? And it's, I, I think some, a couple of people kind of mentioned it in chat. It's like, you know, tooltips and stuff, right? It's like, yeah. you see in a lot of like loading screens for many different games, like even freaking League of Legends has this, right? Where they just have a one line sort of like, hey, this is a thing that you might want to know or something like that while you're like loading into the game. Because what are you going to do? Stare at the little twirly thing in the bottom right hand corner while you're like loading in. May as well just like toss people a bone there. Again, I'm not saying this is like the only solution, but I think making the information accessible to people in a way that like doesn't feel like you're forcing them to do something. Because I think making people receptive to information is just as important as giving them the information. Like you can, it, it, what's the saying? Like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink, right? It's like you yeah. need to be able to provide the information in a way that people are responsive to it. Because you can scream at them all you want. You can like, you know, type in all chaps and cap, map chat, but nobody's going to listen to you unless you like give, uh, you, you kind of incentivize them to like listen to you. 
you know. So, something else as well that I think ArenaNet could do that would be really easy to implement because they've already got it in the game is that like PvP, when you go to play your first match, the game tells you if you're missing something, if you're like missing runes or, or, or um, sigils and stuff like that. And I think before people jump into strikes and raids, it 100% at the very least should give them that alert and tell them that like, hey, you're missing this stuff. Um, they've already got it in the game with PvP. So I feel like that surely would not be too difficult to implement. For... It does that if you have like unselected stats. That's that's what it does. Do. Yeah, right. yeah. I but not if you're missing really... an item. It's if you have like, like no back piece, item. it won't tell you. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you just got you just got no armor. You know, it, it should definitely do this with runes, okay? Because runes yeah. is dev mm -hmm. definitely something that people miss out on. They're like, oh yeah, you know, like I just you know I've got my gear, don't need the runes, right? But actually, right. you probably do want the runes. Actually, now that you mention that, I feel like the tooltip. It's really good the first time you see it. I just feel like it's very inconsistent, right? It's like I remember if you first started like Heart of Thorns and you're like leveling up your gliding, it would like create the little like pointer thing down at your mastery bar when you hit like level one, right? And it would tell you to like level it up, right? But they don't do that consistently across the other stuff, right? It's like, let's say like you leveled up your Raptor. They're not they're not going to tell you, even though some people might just skip ahead to Path of Fire. And then same thing, at least in my experience, I don't know if like somehow I like magically turned it off or something. I didn't get any pop-ups when I was like, filling out my EOD masteries. And sometimes the EXP would just be sitting there and I'd completely forgotten about it, right? And this is coming from someone who's played this game for too, too long. So it's like, you know, if I've forgotten about it, think about the new players that also would have forgotten about it, right? And it's like, the tooltips can also be used, like you said, as like a force for good, right? It's like, you point out like, hey, you have, you know, you're like, check out your runes, you know, like you don't have any like rune matching sets or something like that, or you're missing the back piece, like Teapot said, or like maybe let's say, uh, your your weapons and stuff maybe you don't have an offhand on one of them right it's like you know you're missing two skills here just kind of like a gentle notification maybe with a decision to opt out of them right it's like you know if you're like a veteran player and you're just messing around with your build you don't want pop-ups everywhere right so having like the option to opt out of it but having the original option to be opting in i think would be very helpful uh, i think okay. arena net shouldn't uh, be too scared of cool tips um step I mean, wants to get like, in I, yeah, I, ha I have. Yeah, see, I'm just really, I'm really troubled by what I'm about explode. to say. I'm, I like <laughs> erupt. Here's the problem. Like, th this is gonna make me sound like super doomer for a second. But everybody, everybody, like, hold on to your chair for a second. None of that really matters if <laughs> if people aren't going to change. Like, it, none of that really matters if your stats don't matter, right? So, like, you can put the tooltip, but the reason that people ignore the tooltip is because they don't receive any sort of reason for needing to do it. Right? How it's would you make like... it meta? Is my I think that's the that's the conundrum. How do you make how do you make those stats meta? Like, like th this is going to sound really crazy, but I often forget to <laughs> cuz I have legendary stuff, right? And sometimes I'll like change the weapon, but I forget that it wipes out the stats. And I'll just like go into a raid without stats on my short bow or something. Right? <laughs> And I still kill the thing, um, but, and that's like an extreme example. And I'm like, oh man, I'm doing a little bit less damage. But in open world, it just doesn't matter. Like I'll, I'll go for hours without thinking about it at all, right? Um, and, and then I'll be like, oh my, I had nothing on my trinkets at all this entire time. And I, I received absolutely no um, consequence for that whatsoever, right? I got all the same rewards. I killed everything in relatively the same amount of time. I mean, we're in some cases, people, there are there are trains that go around that actively tell people to unequip all of their stuff. <laughs> Okay. I mean, okay, to be fair, that's because you don't want to one shot the mobs, right? Like that that's like well, you're yeah. just yeah, my, my the point wealth, is but... that it, that's how little the stats and things matter. Uh, and this so is... it's difficult to say like, okay, we need to change these tooltips and and address these so that people will change their stats, but people don't feel how meaningful those stats are, right? That, that's the problem, is that they don't ever understand how those stats are really affecting them because they, there's, they just don't see it, right? There's, there's no way to tell that it's happening. 
right? I think I it think, also depends on the yeah. scale, right? It's like if you forget one trinket just out of forgetfulness, I don't think that should lock you out of like not being able to do anything, right? But it's like right. you said, if you like forget to change all of your trinkets, then suddenly this is like you're losing yeah. six times. Now you stuff, can't win. Right? Now you're yeah, locked exactly. out. So yeah. I imagine if there's like some sort of threshold in there, like actually – I'm going to use Lost Ark again as, as an example. But if you are yeah. missing certain types of like weapons or something like that, it prevents you from using your skills. So maybe like, you know, if you're missing all six trinkets and like you're below like a certain stat threshold of like those trinkets, you're not allowed to use your utility skills, right? Because then it's a direct like <laughs> you're forgetting this. So therefore you don't get to use this, right? It, it's like, it's a very, it's a very one-to-one -one mapping, right? It's like this okay. happens. So then you get this consequence, you know? Yeah, so. I think it's a slippery slope because <laughs> if we try to adjust the open world to make stats have an impact, we run the risk of the open world being like prohibitively yeah. difficult for the average player. Yeah, don't yeah. don't get really me wrong, that's not what well, I'm well, saying. Well, okay, 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 right. Know, let, 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 let me, just, look, know, I'm, I'm going to save you. That, like, let me save you. Scale, it's a sliding scale. <laughs> yeah. It's really tricky to like, yes, for arena net right. to like perfectly balance this to where it's like, it's well, not no, I'm too not even hard, saying they necessarily need to. I'm just saying that I don't understand how if we had these tooltips and we encourage people to change these stats, I'm just not All sure right. that they would see see or understand the value of them in open world content immediately, right? Because it's it's trickier to decipher what's going on in open world because there's a lot of visual clutter uh, and you don't necessarily receive feedback a lot. So you'd be you'd be changing your stats, but you don't necessarily understand what's really going on without external tools. Um, and and so that's it. Just it just becomes very tricky. It's like okay, well we can tell people to change their stats, but they still don't really understand how that's changing anything. I mean, I think that's a problem with the game fundamentally as a whole, right? Like, it, it's uh, not it's not a problem with the game. This is just a problem that's unique to Guild Wars 2 because we mentioned it earlier, but there's no holy trinity in this game, right? So it's like your individual performance is highly dependent on a lot of different factors. Are you playing, like, a hybrid support? Are you playing a full support? Are you playing a DPS? Are you playing a power or condition damage version of the DPS? Are you tanking while also healing? Are you tanking while doing support? Are you tanking while doing... There's, like... A million and one different combinations there. And it's very, very difficult to streamline it in the same way that other games have. And as a result, it's like, you know, how is the game going to tell unless, you know, like we perfect the robot overlords and it's able to like, you know, think at the same level as us humans. Like, how is the game going to decide based off of some arbitrary threshold that, you know, this player is doing what they're supposed to do? Right. And then like, you know, it also kind of opens up the point again, this is totally for selfish reasons, but I've done like super silly things, right? Like I've done like naked raids, you know, where you don't do anything mm -hmm. except you have your weapon and then you just have to try to beat the boss without any trinkets on at all. Right. It's like you lose a lot of that kind of like dynamicness if you add these like hard limits, which is why I think like, you know, gentle suggestions, just again, if you're maybe if you're not equipping a single trinket whatsoever, right, it's like you don't even know what trinkets are, then maybe it locks you out of your utility skills. Right, just something, something like that, where it's kind of like you know, you completely messed this up somehow, and then now here is your punishment. You know, so. I, yeah. Well, I think it's interesting. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, like, other, I, I really want to get in it because I, I think that Do it. Get we, in. Get I, in. I, I think here perfection is the enemy of good. Okay. Yeah. Um, agreed. Like we're, we're doing, oh, it, it's got to be this. Oh, it won't. It won't be. I mean, just just say you know what? If you do really well in the fight and you don't get hit that much. And you do defiance bar damage because this is all trackable. We know you can track it because Arc DPS can, so Anet definitely can. Um, if you apply a bunch of boons, if you do a bunch of damage, you revive a bunch of people. Fuck it, right? Maybe the game gives you a little pat on the back, gives you an extra rare item. Why the hell not? I, I think that there's there's this tendency to go. If you don't play well, you should face the social. Co <laughs> face the cosmic, right? Here, you, know, I can't you should that. you should well, get the punish. But have... I, why just not? Why just just why not have it just as a as a positive reinforcement? If you do oh, really no, that's well, that's exactly what I I want to say too. Like that yeah. that's what we should do now. Right now, the positive reinforcement <laughs> leans all the way to the point where it doesn't mean anything anymore. At least to me, I don't I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion, but to me. I don't even think about the rewards anymore because they just happen, right? They they just exist, and that's for every player. I'm not saying I'm, I'm um, like unique in this way or anything. Every player experiences this. You just get all of the rewards, uh, and you never, you never like fail at getting a reward. Really, 
So what I think would be nice is if you just had tiers of like getting more and more and more rewards. So it's like, yeah, you did even better. Like, oh, here's a bonus for like doing this super cool thing. You look, you dodged that 10 times. Wow, good for you. Here's another piece of rare equipment. You know, you, you just add more rewards so that engaging with the game means something. Because right now people are like, I'm just going to get the reward. So... I'm going to park my character here with a million turrets and I'll be back in 10 minutes when Drakkar's dead. Like that, yeah. that just happens all I the agree time. That. I think right? positive reinforcement, it just in general, right. And for like people yeah. who are learning positive reinforcement goes a much, a, a very, very far distance. And I think something we talked about, not on this tea time, but uh, in a previously in a discussion kind of talked about like maybe using the achievement panel for that. Right. It's like, you know, let's say you did 600 damage to Suwon's break bar during like the entire fight. Right. And then the game can register that. And then you get an extra piece of loot or, or you get an extra role at like, you know, the loot table potentially getting like an infusion. You know, it's like if, if we leverage existing systems to kind of like reward players, I think it would be a very non-intrusive way to like introduce that sort of positive reinforcement. I, I'm going to play yeah. devil's advocate and say that I think failure is a good way to learn. And that's probably why we've seen an increase in skill level with the strikes and dragon's end. And I personally, even like, you know, as someone who plays this game a lot, if I got more rewards for doing like CC, I don't know if I would like just the way that rewards are in Guild Wars 2. I don't know if I'd like care that much and i don't know if like new players oh, you're telling you would don't even care know about the no. oh my god yeah but it's like and i don't even <laughs> think i don't even think if they implemented something like that that arena net could really easily communicate that to new players and tell them if you do better you get better rewards i think in every other game that i know it's like if Having like this is gonna I mean, be it can be both right <laughs> it doesn't need to be just one it can be both. exactly um but i just I don't know. I think failure is good, and that's the way people learn in a lot of video games, is that if they fail, they need to do better. And without it... Um, it you, you're going to have both, though. You're going to have both. For example, yeah, on, on, on Sue Wan, this is what yeah. people have been saying, and honestly, this this should always have been part of the conversation, I think. The further you yeah. get on Sue Wan, the more rewards you should get. Right, you know, if you mm -hmm. fair, th this is the problem with Guild Wars 2. This is actually a huge issue with Guild Wars 2. That massive, this is a tangential topic, I guess, with players getting into harder content, but is the fact that that you either get all the loot or you get literally fucking nothing. Okay, so yeah. if you fail Sue One, well, unlucky, buddy, right? You get you get seven copper and three K XP. Nice. Okay. Good yeah. job. Right. You know, That's more than I oh, pay yeah. my mods every month. Yeah. Pay my Let's mods go. One copper a month. Are one, you kidding me? One copper. So much money. So they're making bank off this Sue One. Yeah. That's seven months yeah. of wages right there. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, like it, I, I think you can have both, right? You can have it scale uh, based on how far the event goes, but also how well players do individually. And I don't think anyone could really argue with that. You could even do this. Is something that uh, you actually said, Emmy. I think this is really, really true. By the way, is people like um, UI <coughs> elements. You were talking about how when you see an achievement pop up when you did something in a fight, you're like, "Oh, what happened? What did I do?" Right? I think that's really big. I think that that should be even more highlighted, right? Like if you do, if you if you start completing an achievement, like jumping over all the shockwaves on Sue One, or um, I don't, I don't know, like, or, you know, all the ads die within five seconds of each other, or something like that. Like, wow, good job, guys, so coordinated, something like that. Like a giant thing should probably say, "Hey, good job, guys, that was pretty nice, well done." <laughs> or hell, why why not have an achievement for beat Sue One with over eight minutes left on the timer? Ooh, that would be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think don't for me, think I new players uh, care uh, about achievements is the problem. I, I they don't care, they care they don't care, but they care about things popping up on the screen and getting a dopamine. That's what hit, I agree. Right? I think for me, seeing a visual difference is yeah. Funny. I'm just going about my day. Yeah. I see the rain pellets everywhere. My frames are like five per second or something like that. And then mm -hmm. an achievement pops up in the bottom right corner. I'm immediately like, oh. Forget the boss. Let me see what this achievement is. Yeah. And I, I, I like click on it and I'm like, oh, it's because I did something, something. Maybe not quite to like, you know, that extreme. Maybe not just like an achievement thing down at the bottom, but maybe like, you know, something happens in the fight, right? It's like if you manage to like achieve something, you get like an audio cue or a visual cue or some something to kind of like indicate, just like drawing your attention to what they want you to be paying attention to, you know? It's like, it's, other, otherwise it's like, you're, you, if you, 
don't know what to look for, then you're never going to see it, right? But if the game very specifically says, hey, look at this, look at me, then a lot more people are going to take note of it. It doesn't have to be 100% of the people, right? It's like yeah. if even 5% of the people start taking notice of something, then that 5% will then snowball into the rest of the game. You know, they're going to take that knowledge onwards. And then every time that you do the meta, you know, that's five more percent of people that are like paying attention, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. like Ayer said. It's like I see box, I click yeah. box. It's just, it's just a, I mean, it's a reaction. I think it's so. an element that could be added for sure. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, it'd be a good thing. Uh, but I don't, I don't know of like any other MMO or like game in general that really does that to that degree. Like really just tells you that you're like good gameplay. Here's a sticker every single time you do something <laughs> good like in the game, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's just, I'm, I'm trying to think of like the brand new player that like comes to Guild mm -hmm. Wars 2. Um, and that would just feel like a bit free to play to me to have these like alerts all the time telling you you've done a good job at everything you've done. I think it's definitely think like it's, there's an element there that would be good. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of how much you want to I mean, rotate right. the dial. Yeah. You know. I think that's kind of the way games work these days. That's I think that's the way that all the player base engages with the games is that it has to be, there's a lot of feedback, lots of visual feedback. Open the chest, get the loot. I, I think the best, and look, I'm not saying this is a good thing, but look at mobile games. Like even though the games aren't oh. even good, how do they engage their player base? It's like, oh, bonus chest, open this, open that, get the loot, get those items, daily login. Oh, you just unlocked seven chests, open all of them, right? Go and like spin the wheel of fortune and get another random thing there as well. It's like input, 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 right? That, and I think mobile games, there's a lot to criticize there, but you can't deny that the way the modern generation or the modern generation, the current generation of gamers interact with games definitely leans in that direction right with a lot of feedback constant feedback uh and and input from the game like telling you oh you're doing something well you're doing something you're you know you're you, this is good this is keep doing it keep doing it and well i mean like aside from that maybe being a little bit psychologically unhealthy uh that that is how players behave right that is the behavior pattern that and you can see this in modern mmos right and I think we were talking about this a, a little before the stream, Bloom, but I played the WoW new player experience the other day. And holy yeah. shit, does it hold your hand. Oh my god! Sure. Right, I, um, really I I did not expect it because I hadn't played um, retail WoW for, for ages, actually. And it literally walks you through every single ability you have and how you would use it and all these concepts. It even, it even has like a crowd control tutorial, which is quite interesting, actually, right? Like, you know, I, yeah. I was playing Mage and it was like, oh, you need to polymorph this guy, right? Turn him into a sheep. For this reason, oh, this is how you might use that ability. What an interesting yeah. idea. Uh, and it re and and the entire time, it's spamming UI elements at me. The entire, yeah. honestly, I, it was annoying me at the end. It was too yeah. much. It just kept doing yeah. it. Oh, you got a new item, equip it. You got a new item, equip it. Oh, you know, there's a quest over here. Go and look at that, right? Oh, there's a secret yeah. on the map. Go and look at that. It was constantly inputting me with everything. It is, yeah. it's almost the opposite of what Guild Wars 2 is. And, um... I imagine it works really well, to be honest. Actually. I think it's yeah. I mean, it's a great tutorial area because yeah. I've I've loved it as well. And I think I think that's the thing is those UI elements and stuff. I think they need to be front loaded into the start of the game, not at the mm -hmm. end with mm -hmm. the open world and stuff. I think having those heaps of like UI pop up UI pop ups and like good job doing this, that should all happen like at the beginning of the game, and it scales off as you hit like level eighty. I think is I the do like, agree important with that. distinction. Think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you're first learning a game, right? That's like when you're kind of like retaining the most information. Like I'm just going to use like, you know, human like biology, psychology. Like we learn the most in our formative years, right? Because at that point, we don't have any expectations already in the game that's influencing us to like, you know, play one way or another. Or like, you know, same way IRL. We don't have those like preformed like behaviors that we just kind of like naturally gravitate to. You know, it's like, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but that kind of unconscious competence very much comes from that, right? Because I would imagine like every single, okay, maybe not every single, most Guild Wars 2 players that like, you know, don't have like physical limitations and stuff, know how to use WASD to move around and know how to use their right hand to move the camera, right? It's like, that's just something that we learn from the moment that we played the game. And then we kind of take it for granted from here on out. I think if we introduced more behaviors and more, I guess, like, you know, performance modifiers, like early into the game, more people can kind of start internalizing that before it really starts mattering. 
right? It's like, again, it's like, you know, we think of like movement as very natural, but what about like, you know, potentially keybinds, right? It's like, you know, yeah. your utility skills are all the way on the other side of like the keyboard and Skill most people, click. they don't, they, they, yeah, click. exactly. It's like, and that's not because <laughs> the game said you need to skill click. This is just a natural behavior that arose from the lack of guidance early into the game. You know, and it's like, just so you know, I, I like, if you got a skill click, you do you. If you have like physical limitations, you do you. But like, the reality is a lot of people, they don't really need to. It's just because that's what they learned when they like first started the game. So yeah, I'm going to like derail this somewhat, but Great. like, <laughs> I want to, <laughs> I want to touch on something that we haven't like talked about at all, which is like, oh. how do you communicate? How do you communicate build craft in traits? like which are passive, you know, passive things. How do you teach players how to build their character through traits? And how do you teach players how boons work? Because that is such a complicated issue that I am kind of like yeah. lost on, you know? That stuff's really complicated. And the game it's, doesn't really yeah. ease you into that. Especially I think the initial leveling experience is really tricky because you're given hero points and you have to divvy that up between active utility skills that do a thing or you invest them into passive traits, which nobody wants to pick because they're new players and they want to see new skills. Um, I My thought, my immediate thought, is that all specializations should be rolled into like an elite spec wheel where you're unlocking utilities and traits at the same time throughout the whole ring rather than having this stuff separated because nobody wants to pick passive traits over active skills. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Like... I, I think, think game... that there's, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think that should be just a, a giant glossary or or index where you can look up any skill in the entire game and it would like categorize all the different effects. Maybe that would be a yeah. little bit, I, I that might be a little heavy handed, <laughs> but I think that <laughs> is the most practical solution that I think would be realistic. So you could open up this window and you could look up any skill in the game, right? So if I'm on my Guardian, right? And I'm just, oh, dude, I'm playing Guardian, Pog. And I play PvP. I'm like, I play against a Spectre. It's like, whoa, this Spectre just farmed me. What the hell, right? And then I could look up Spectre and it would yeah. let me look at every single skill that, ha that, that Spectre yeah. might have, right? Yeah. Um, and I could look at all these key effects like, oh, what does protection do exactly? What does um, Vigor do? Even if I don't have it on my build, because because this is a yeah. weird thing, slightly subtle thing actually. If your build or class can't apply an effect, you can't easily look at what it does, right? You'd have to go yeah. and make a character that has it um, and then yeah. look at that effect. That's kind of weird. I have a suggestion for yeah. this actually. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go on. Um, this would be very simple. I, well, I say that, but all the devs are going to be like, eh, it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, what if when you went into your hero panel and you went into build, oh. you know how it shows like your skills and then there's a bit of dead space up there? What if that just showed like what conditions you do and what boons you do or provide and it just had like a little summary of like according to what you've picked for your traits and your weapons and things these are some of the boons that you will provide and some of the conditions that you will do yeah just as like, like a lot. little bit of uh so that players had a little bit more idea what was going on at a glance i think as well like that can be rolled into the stat sheet and you need to be able to show how those boons are affected by your stats like how how much your concentration is boosting your like protection uptime and that sort of thing. Like how long that protection is going to yeah. last now. I mean, how, how deep do you want to go? Do you want to put yeah, right, um, exactly. uptime on there? I think that gets kind of complicated. Um, I'd, sure. I'd, for now, I think it'd just be nice to just the people know that they're providing it. Cause I totally. mean, a good example is, I mean, people aren't running this build as much before, but it never dawned. This, this is going to sound really dumb. But I didn't play Rev like ever, so it never really dawned on me that that Div Ren or like your traditional Alacrity Renegade was providing a lot of protection, a lot, right? I, it never really dawned on me because I never played Rev and I didn't even really know that they were providing protection. I didn't even know. That. Um, so when I started playing it, I actually didn't even realize until I was like, "Oh, these skills are providing protection. What the heck?" <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, this functionality already kind of exists, right? Like there's like a build template sort of thing where it kind of like 
highlights like the buffs and stuff that your build is currently providing. I actually like that idea a lot, just kind of like giving like a visual indicator to that. The other thing I was kind of thinking, and this is possibly derailing a little bit since it's only really applicable to like PVP or technically when you die, but having a death summary, I think would also help. Like, you know, like when you died, it could give you like a snapshot of like what conditions you had, what buffs you had on yourself, like, you know, what was the killing blow, right? Like in PVP, it's like, what was the killing blow? And then you could like mouse over and say like, I, I I don't PvP. So I I don't know. Like you know, some someone like you know auto attack you for like eighteen thousand damage or something. Big like that, right. It's like having some sort of post death sort of like review might kind of like nudge people towards like oh I didn't have or I I, I have like no buffs on me right. Whereas like you know if you had all of the buffs then maybe you wouldn't have died. You know. Doesn't it do that? Am I like? Does it stupid? do that? Isn't, isn't there like a little thing you can break down? I swear I was watching like a muffler is- stream and he could like track that someone's. You know, there is isn't PvP. Um, okay, like the, right. I, I think Im- improving the combat log could be pretty good, right? Um, yeah. Just in general, yeah. just looking yeah. at that, like just making it a bit better because it is a bit, uh, it's not the most useful thing in the universe. It, it, you know, right. it's, it's surprisingly useful, actually, if you're getting into raids and strikes because you can actually, um, some of the abilities actually have tooltips from monsters, which, which is actually really interesting. Um, so you can actually mouse over the abilities and kind of see what they do or like what the mechanics are yeah. named. So that, which is quite interesting. But yeah, I, I think that that type of feedback on like what actually happened would definitely mm. be would definitely be a good idea for sure. I, I just yeah. I, I want to I'm going to derail even further here, real quick. Like it, it's not about <laughs> okay. To be clear, guys, none of us here are saying it's impossible to learn this without a guide. That's not our goal. The, the goal is is that we want to create an environment that passively teaches players about the game because most players who engage with any video game are like, oh, I'm just playing the game. I'm having a good time, right? They're not going to go out and actively learn the game. That's just not the way people want to play. They just want to chill, right? They just want to go, oh yeah, I'm just having a good time. But the point is, is that you what is that teaching players passively in a way that they're okay with it and they'll accept to better understand the game, it will make the game better. Okay, I'm, I'm very cautious in my wording here because well. it will reduce the amount of frustration in the game. Because if you understand the I game better, you can yep. work towards your goals in the game better. Because as Emmy said right at the start of this, this is a very personal skill oriented game. And in general, if you're able to learn the game a little bit better, you can beat harder content and get rewards a little bit quicker. Now, it's not a one-to-one, oh yeah, skill is, you know, the more skill you have, the faster you earn gold, and that's another thing entirely, right? Okay, that can get a little bit, that can get a bit funky (laughs) um, sometimes. But the point is, is that um, if a player understands the game a little bit better, just passively from ambient stuff in the game, like just just a gradual introduction to mechanics, then they're gonna have a way easier time if they go, oh, I wanna get the PVP back piece. Or they're going to have a way easier time. Like, dude, I'd love legendary armor. That'd be sick. I want to go get that. Because right now, because players kind of have a very low ambient understanding and introduction to game mechanics, moving to any of these goals, even farming gold, right? Because if you don't understand uh, like stuff like, hey, even how the economy works, that's that's part of the game too. How items work, how materials work, how mystic forging works, how crafting works. Like if you don't understand how this works, you're going to have a way harder time um, farming gold. You know, a lot of players in my chat say every single, you know, every day they'll go, man, I can't find gold. How do I farm gold, Teapot? I'm earning less than five gold an hour, right? What, what am I doing wrong? I don't understand, right? And it, these are the things, like it's this type of process that we want to help players get the hang of right like and you you don't want them to go right i just google it and i'll solve it yeah of course that's the answer right but players don't do that and they won't and to yours they never will okay it's just not gonna happen it's not 2005 you're not there in in vanilla wow with your you know your mountain dew right just you know just going crazy on your your 640 by 480 monitor looking up thoughtbot on the other machine that word yeah, that's yeah, that, that that's not what it sounds like, guys. Okay, that was the original um, name of Wowhead, funnily. Well, or what? Well, a kind of Wowhead, anyway. But yeah, that's just not how it works, my friends, uh, anymore. Like you know, we're in the Zuma era, right? People just want to play the game, right? Uh, and and ambiently experience it, and you have to design your game around that, and design your community around that, right? 
And kind of to jump in on that, so it's a bit of derail, but I promise this has a point. Oh, there nice. was a psychological experiment that was conducted, and it was at a cafeteria at like a university or something like that. And the goal was going, or the goal was to increase water consumption over things like soda and juices and stuff. And what they found to be the most productive was to actually change the environment that people were in. So, for example, they would add more water bottles near the line when they were checking out, or have a bigger quantity of like vending machines and like water was like at like reachable height like right like right in front of you and stuff right and what they found was that the water consumption went up really really high I forget exactly the numbers but it was like a hundred and fifty percent more water sales and a lot of people when you know they're in that environment they don't register that that they're they're not consciously thinking oh hey they changed the water placement let me like make this experiment succeed and like take the water bottle so that they get better. And nobody's thinking that, right? It's just, it's because it's there and because the passive environment has changed, human behavior then changes as well, right? So it's like, if we change the passive environment that yours who resides in, then players will then naturally start behaving in the way that we want them to. And you can call that like, you know, manipulative and stuff. I, I think mm. like, you know, that's maybe one way of thinking of it. I think it's more just like, you know, you're just changing the environment as Teapot said to make it less frustrating for like, you know, future content. You know, it's like if you make this information just like very easy to access, then more people are going to access it. You know, that is just we we take the path of least resistance. Yeah. So. You have I to be very reward. careful, Emmy. If you, uh -oh. you say, if you uh -oh. say anything scientific or anything that's to do with research, you will get <laughs> annihilated. Um, <laughs> oh, please, please, I'm just, I'm just trying to like illustrate a point right now. Like, obviously, yeah. I don't, I can't like recite the paper I mean, off the top of my head. But you know. are you sure it was think... peer reviewed? <laughs> oh kidding. no, <laughs> it was peer reviewed by my cat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's way more. It's way more legit than. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I no, think like problem. rewards are a great incentive. And I think it's interesting that you brought up Lost Ark earlier, Emmy, because Lost Ark, argu like I have a lot of things to say about it, but like um, arguably Lost Ark has even more systems than Guild Wars 2, but it introduces them in a way, like the way it introduces you to those systems is way more effective than Guild Wars 2 does. And it has like a smart thing that I think Guild Wars 2 could also implement is it basically just has like a reward track that is shuttling you through different content. And for each piece of content you do, you get like an actual useful reward. Like it'd be cool if there was basically just a reward, le like a, a checklist where um, it'll just introduce you to stuff and doing one strike gets you this piece of stat selectable gear. And then doing one fractal gets you this piece of stat selectable gear. And it like has meaningful rewards tied to doing everything, you know, once in in like a, a um, an understandable order would be really good, I think. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I think that that's it definitely goes into the kind of like the player guidance element. I think some of that's really good. Um, that you know, there was a bit of a like semi leak about this that maybe they're looking at something like this, like some kind of seasonal achievement that they were developing. They showed yeah. it off when they were looking at the um, I think it was like the new kind of map, I think. Yeah. So it looks like they yeah. might do that. We haven't heard anything about it, so it's not confirmed, but like they were at least maybe poking at that. And in general, I think that's just good because um, I'm going to look, Aina, I'm going to give you a little tip, a little bonus meme, right? Sending players um, a mail at level 80 is not good yeah. enough to make sure they're going to look at fractals, right? Or, or anything no like that. It's just not going to work. Yeah. It's not how it works. You know I, um, think so, I, yeah. I have a solution sort of in that like one thing that every player knows how to do is follow the green star the main story step that just has the green star and i think every single expansion when you finish it should send you on this like i don't know make it an orange star that sends you through like end game content and it's it's optional but it just gives you this optional objective that just says complete fractal once and you get some reward from it tie it all to like that i mean it yeah the story journal just tie it to that and have those objectives within that because everyone knows where that is um whereas achievements if they added an achievement for doing a fractal once which i'm, I'm sure there are achievements tied to those activities everyone ignores them because they're like just yeah, buried under all very... these achievements very archaic yeah. i think yes a lot of like That's i think the ui elements are very archaic in this game it's a testament right. to how old it is yeah, yeah, I think a lot of this. Uh, yeah, speaking of the achievements panel, that's like a whole other discussion because there's stuff Ooh, in the achievement panel. Don't mention the like, UI. The UI is oh, the forbidden. I'm going, it's the forbidden. To, I'm going to. We need to talk about it. Like the um, 
the elite spec collections that give you a free piece of ascended gear that you can stat swap basically to whatever stat you want that's hidden in the achievements panel with everything else like with with a fishing achievement you know like that that stuff should be moved over to the story journal i think it's like a side story thing you know be right back and my kids woking up i'm just gonna like be right back i'm gonna dip you know mute myself he's out he's yeah. ducking just, out from the firing line I'm, i'll be right back yeah i'll be right back to <laughs> Oh man, I thought chat was gonna definitely make that. You know that little blue face, the one that's like really shocked. I thought all oh. of them were gonna put that. Yeah. yeah. The horror, the horror of the situation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like th this, th the UI stuff is definitely a, a really important topic, and I, I hope they would look at that kind of stuff and create ways for players to engage. I think the really important thing, though. And this is a slight re-rail, I guess, to what we were talking about earlier, is that it's, in my mind, it's got to be repeatable, okay? Like, you know, there should be, you know, like every single time you do Drakkar, you should get a slightly extra reward if you dodge over the shockwaves. Or the, it should rotate, right? Like, it should be like, okay, one week, you know, like, there's a challenge. you got to go and do Drakkar without getting hit by any of the shockwaves, and you get, like, a bonus thing for doing that. And then ev next week, it's like, oh, go and do the same thing on Shadow Behemoth, but do do that without getting hit or something like that. Or, I uh, no, go, like, just go and do, rotate around all these bosses, that kind of stuff. And, and you get rewarded for engaging in the game, like, as much as possible. That can also guide players to different areas of the game as well. Like, hey, go and do this strike mission under a certain time right and then that's like a thing you can work on for a week stuff like that i i i actually think that kind of things that don't you don't have to do first try are actually really good as well that that's oh yeah because whenever we talk about systems like this i always get a little bit nervous because i go oh look you get more loot if you kill the boss faster well that means that if people end up in bad groups they're gonna get big mad right it's, it's the reason yeah. why the strike missions um the strike missions, the gold, silver, bronze thing, it's like worthless. It does nothing, right? Um, yep. Because they knew and they were right that if they, met, if they made that reward structure actually good so that getting gold was like twice as good as getting bronze, there's just no way, okay? There's no way that it wouldn't be completely putrid, right? It would be really toxic. So I think if it was like, oh, you know, every week there's like a challenge you can go and do and you can keep trying at it basically, then that would make it way better. People will cheese it. Yeah, sure. People will cheese it, but that's that. But you know how you do that, guys? You just don't design the game badly. Um, what, what, okay, well, what's the objective with this, though? Maybe I'm a little lost. What? Why do you I, want there to be like these weekly challenges? Are you thinking because, that help players learn the game? Or? Because yeah, sure. I, I I want players to get rewarded for engaging in key mechanics on encounters um, out in the open world and maybe in instance content as well, right? Um, hmm, okay. Yeah, that will be good. I and I, I think I think you could also. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, they, I'll, I, you know, we. I think we talked about this a while ago, Snap. I would love it if there was actually like an encounter summary thing at the end where it just tells yeah. you, like, this is how well you did, right? And I think yeah, there should yeah. be like achievements, and even it should be repeatable. That if you get high scores, right? Like, oh yeah, you did really well on this. Yeah, the game should give you a bit of a pat on the back for that. Um, yeah. you know, because because right now players, you know, who players who do twenty k DPS and players who do two hundred DPS they get the exact same thing out, which is fine. I actually don't mind that. But the problem is, is that there's no oh, way yeah. <laughs> for the for the 20K player to identify that they did really well. And the 2K yeah. player, to uh, the 200 deepest, where they go like, hmm, I didn't do very do well in this encounter. Right? Why, why does that not bother you? Um, Because I, I, I think it's because I'm not a very reward-oriented player. If, if I got nothing, if Dragon's End gave no rewards, I would still do it. Same. I lose money I think, every time I, I do Dragon's People. End. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think I mean, the big I, reason why I don't care is that it's a collaborative effort. And yeah. all I care about really in a raid or something is like clearing it. And I guess, you know, the supports are probably not going to be doing enough DPS. So they're, they're going to be judged on their like, I guess, healing. But what if the players are doing, like all the players are doing really well and they're dodging all mechanics and they're not getting hit by stuff, then how do they get contribution? And it's like a whole. Well, the thing is, yeah, all of that's all of that is trackable, right? Because because yeah. thing is, I, I, okay, and this is this is sl okay. I'll be very clear. Slightly bad comparison alert here, gamers. Okay, so just put on your bad comparison hats real quick and just interpret this. Like, it would be it would be easy to write 
an Arc DPS plugin that could do what we're describing. In fact, devs could do it in a few days. Okay, and think... obviously that's harder when we're talking about integrating into a proper UI, doing QA, right? Like making it work everywhere, right? And testing it. It's way harder to do that. But something like this is doable with the information that we have access to as the players. Because we have a mechanics log, right? Like, you know, um, if someone treads in an oil, you know about it on Demos, right? Like that's very much, you know, laid out. Like that's available to the players even. And funnily enough, actually, there's actually a, pro this is going to be an interesting project to see how accurate it is actually. Um, but the, there's a developer working on something called raidcore.gg, which is basically going to be a parsing website for Guild Wars 2. Oh, but it's oh, also, oh, it's also going to incorporate a um, mechanical failure. So it, it will look at stuff like damage taken and how many abilities you've tanked and your rating will be adjusted based off that as well. So it's not like this technology couldn't exist. Um, it's the question of would they ever do something like this? Like, and, and that's the big question to me. Would they do this? Hmm. I think they, I, you know what? I think they would actually maybe do it as long as it only showed your rating and there was no way yeah. to share it or link it, okay? So in other words, you yeah. can't, you and wouldn't was... be able to leverage it to like kill proof people out of it, right? That was my <laughs> suggestion originally, right? I don't think anybody else necessarily needs to know, but it'd be nice to be able to compare yourself to the team around you without like it being super detrimental to your to you know you maybe you get getting kicked or something right it's just be nice to know if if you do 400 damage and the person next to you does 40,000 don't you think you should know that like <laughs> i don't know like I, I maybe i'm just different but i <laughs> I guess the reason it bothers me is I get flashbacks to university and I just think about like <laughs> all the projects that I did completely <laughs> alone with three people next to me. Yeah. Like every single time I go in and I look at Arc DPS and I'm like, ah, Sneb's doing 25k and the next person's doing four. I'm thinking of like accounting 101. I did the entire project <laughs> while these two guys were like, what is math? <laughs> I was, and I had to like do the whole thing. And I just think, why why does it have to be that way? Why can't we all like work together and contribute? And it like it would be I nice think... if if people did, right? Like, well, I, I don't I, know. It feels more transferable, though, right? It's like you, even yeah. like you know, if you're doing really really well in like raids, it's not like you're just gonna flip a switch. Unless, let's say like you know you have IRL like obligations or something you're not just going to flip a switch and then suddenly become a terrible player when you play an open world you know so i think it's like you know this sort of like i guess like measuring sort of discussion i maybe this is a hot take i don't think it should be done in open worlds because like i said it's like you know you're you're competing against players that didn't even know they were in a competition you know i, I think that's very unfair to them whereas like you know if you had this sort of information that's available let's say even in like tier one fractals you know like you know that that you don't even need ar for that but having like you said like just a minor summary to kind of like see how much damage you did how much damage you took uh you know whether or not you applied any boons to your like allies that sort of thing that could be very helpful in a like controlled small environment and then you can carry that knowledge into other aspects of the game because i i i genuinely don't think it's necessary for open world like you I'm, know like I'm, we can have difficult open world content that's like you know it, it's like you know the top 20% of the players are carrying them. Maybe I'm biased, but I see nothing wrong with that. You know, it's like you're always going to have a difference in skill level. It's going to be impossible to pull, like, you know, the people who, you know, it's going to be impossible to pull everyone to the same level. And I don't think you should. I'm going to, like, butt in and just say that, like, aren't ArenaNet already sort of solving this by having strike difficulty modes? Because by the, if the challenge mode comes out, right? And they tie good enough challenge, like good enough rewards to the challenge modes, which would be excellent. Um, that would mean that all the good players get rewarded by doing the challenge mode, and all the people that aren't good enough to do the challenge mode are just doing the standard mode. And you have you you get that link between being a good player and getting better rewards by going to the challenge mode. And then the the players that are Don't less get experienced. Rewards. That's well, the thing is, those I players know, are exactly. those I mean, players are thing. already good, though. That's the thing; they're already good. That's yep. the problem. Like, if they go, if you're the type of player who's going to go and blast strike CMs, it, it, you, you know, to a, to an extent, you aren't relevant anymore um, because you've already made it. I, I think we're looking at how can we express this idea to players who haven't made it yet, who are still approaching the game and trying to learn it. 
which is why I think the open world is really good. Mode, right? Well, they wouldn't be able to, but they'll they'll never even try. Okay, <laughs> right. That's the thing. Yeah, and and that's fine. Well, that's a... not everyone has to. Um, but I I think a lot of players feel like they can't. Um, and you know you you could you could say that well just don't feel that way forehead. Uh, but <laughs> right. you know I, I just don't know. Stop like, feeling. Yeah, just just stop <laughs> doing that. And if they, if they, I mean, if they don't want to, they don't want to. But the thing is, um, I, I think that uh, a lot of players actually like the idea of it, but they just don't think they'd be able to do it, or they don't feel like they're cut out, or they don't really know how to start. Like that's the impression that I get from talking to people um, about this stuff. Is they're like, man, I just don't know where to start. Like, where do I even start playing this? Definitely with World vs. World as well. People go like, dude, you know, I'd love to get into World vs. World, but I have no idea where to begin on this game mode. It, it just, I just don't know yeah. how it works. Um, think- uh, that's what I want to get rid of. Like, I want... Yeah. It's not about forcing people to do stuff. It's removing the barriers um, to entry, basically. If you yeah. remove I- all the barriers and then yeah. people go, oh, it's not for me. Hey, fair enough. You know, it's not for everyone. That's fine. Um, you know, and even like stuff like harder open world bosses, you know, if you, if you just want a really chill experience, triple trouble, probably not for you. That can get quite stressful sometimes. Um, you know, there's like a very real chance of failure and that's fine, right? Like it doesn't have to be for everyone. Um, but I do think that, uh, I do think there's something to be said. There's something pretty special about like this massive large scale content, uh, in the open world that does require you to understand the game um to some extent and i i also think like okay okay now now i'm just condemning myself to doom here right it is what i really want to to make it clear is that the amount of input from the player is not actually that high people look at something like su one and go I, and people have said this I, I i've seen people say this they'll say it is as hard as a raid or as a cm raid this is, is inaccurate statement <laughs> okay well, like you have to be careful with how this is phrased though because in in some ways it, it, it depends on what you mean by difficulty right yeah because um organizationally it's more difficult than a raid i would say in some like in some ways right just naturally you have more people they got to move around you got to make sure people go more you're just in charge of more yeah things. but mechanically but, it's not even me- close yeah, mechanically right? it's nowhere close yeah yeah and yeah. the thing and the thing is though is that organizational doesn't require um skill right it just requires uh-huh. knowledge it requires knowledge and then you can organize whereas the mechanics some skill to being a leader though um yeah there uh, is but only w- only one person has to do that though really or like you know like a few yeah, people yeah. need to do this um and and the thing is, these things get conflated a lot. And what I and what I want to make really make it clear about stuff like open world content. I'm not saying they should make um, raids in open world. Uh, what the really cool thing about open world is that it doesn't actually have to be that hard because people typically, um, you know, like it's not as optimized, right? Like, yeah, saved. Um, you know, it's not as optimized in open world. So something can be very, very undertuned, right? Or not that tightly tuned and still be really engaging. Great example is Sue One. Um, if you, again, you can crunch the numbers on this and, and I'd encourage people to check. Um, Sue One has 173 million HP. If you took 60 raiders, um, the boss would probably phase in less than 15 seconds on 20%. I think that's true. Might be less than that. Um, so you can really see how the tuning is. Um, like it isn't actually a very hard DPS check at all. Um, it's much higher than anything else in the game, but that's not what I want. What I want is, is that there's something that you have to do, right? You know, there, there is actually a fail state, right? Like, you know, there's, I think stuff like that is valuable. I think it's a good introduction because it can be very mechanics oriented, a bit like strike mission, right? Strike missions are very mechanics oriented. I think stuff like this, an introduction to mechanics is very valuable. I just completely, I like massively derail here, I guess, like just troll everyone. But yeah, <laughs> It's the Dragon's I, End. I just wanted again. to say that. I mean, Dragon's End, like, because Dragon's End is pivotal to all of this. It's, it's like the, the black hole at the right. center of the galaxy. Just everything <laughs> spins around. I think it's what triggered around. a lot of these okay. conversations, right? It's because yeah. now there yeah. is this new stretch goal that now a lot of players are unable to reach. That is why we're having like a lot of our conversations centered around this. Because we're not going to talk about Shadow Behemoth and Queensdale 
detail because that's like, you know, the first boss a lot of people come across because there's no, or there is complexity to the fight, but it's already handled by people who are not the new players. So because of that, players are never given the opportunity to learn those mechanics, right? Mm. So in doing so, they're essentially being robbed of the opportunity to learn. So, yeah. And to steer it back to like the... um players not feeling qualified to do that content um i think a big big part of the issue is the gearing because like um in in any other mmo uh the only way to like you can determine whether or not you're qualified by your item level that's literally it if you meet the item level requirement to enter some content you feel like you're qualified to do it because that's that's the only requirement whereas guild wars doesn't have any of that and I think a lot of players don't feel empowered to get into strikes or raids because they don't feel like they have the gear or the builds to do that. Um, and I think making those things a lot more accessible would go a long way in getting people into strikes and raids, making making them feel like they like they have a meta build, you know, without having to go really out of their way to do that. Um, I think is really important. And maybe like kind of a a, a bit more of a derail. We're just like driving oh, everywhere, yes. driving the train <laughs> yes. everywhere right yes. now. But it's like we've been talking a lot about what the game systems can do to Ooh. improve the new player experience, right? But we haven't really talked about much of what we as the community to, can do to provide these resources for newer players. Like I know like the entire first half of this tea time, we were kind of talking about how like, you know, we want to avoid third party resources and that sort of thing. But if you think about it, players are part of the environment that people are in right it's like we are literally in a virtual world and the players yeah. are part of that virtual the world. sea and I in think... which the player base swims yeah <laughs> yeah so it's like a, a kind of like a conversation of that is like you know making it more accessible not even just for new players but for commanders to be able to provide these resources for newer players i think it, it would have a massive indirect impact on the new player experience because like you know we can kind of see it like you know in queensdale sometimes people have on mentor tags and they say in map chat like you know feel free to ask me any questions and the thing is i see a lot of people taking advantage of those questions right like when you're running around doing map completion or like the dailies and the lower zones and there's a mentor tag they're constantly typing a map chat because people are willing to engage with them because that's a resource that has been given to them you know they get the mentor name in front of their name they get the little apple tag you know there's like a certain level of prestige to it too because it draws attention to your character model right so in that that would be an example of like one resource that has been given to the community to help enable other members of the community and i think if we, I, I obviously, you know, I'm not saying specific, like, you know, solutions and stuff here, but if we had more things like that, like we talked about it briefly the other day, but like, you know, potentially like giving a commander buff and then you like see more people commanding. So then you see more people that are willing to teach new players these concepts and then it creates this positive feedback loop. Right. It's like more people that know the mechanics are then more inclined to start commanding themselves. And then they start impacting other people that might want to like start doing that sort of thing. And it creates this loop. So. I, I like this topic because, like, um, I think the biggest reason why we don't see more commanders is that a commander tag costs three hundred gold. That's literally yeah. it. I mm -hmm. mean, I've I've wanted to command raids and and strikes and that sort of thing for so long, and even I have never felt compelled to spend three hundred gold on a commander tag. <laughs> is it I because literally you don't got think the tag. value prop is there, or is it because think, you don't have three hundred yeah. gold? It's uh, both, uh, especially for like new players. New players are never like they're just not going to have three hundred. You're not going to have three hundred gold. Yeah, no when way. They, when they do, there's so many other things to spend that three hundred gold on. Um, way like way before getting a commander tag, you know, like it's really yeah. tricky to get that. And I think being able to move squads around and that sort of thing without a commander tag is really good. In fact, I like. Does there need to be a, that much of a gate to getting a commander tag? Couldn't there be something else that's not gold? related because new players aren't going to command a tag up if they if they don't know what they're doing you know like do you just, think it would I, be a problem to have everyone have access to a commander tag I'm, I'm not saying that it necessarily would i'm just curious if there's any any ramifications to making it very accessible I think right. there's a difference I, between yeah. making it very accessible and giving it out for free, right? It's like, for example, imagine if there was like a middle step between mentor tag and commander tag that only costs like 50 gold with maybe like less yeah. like perks to it. I think that would definitely make it more accessible and more people would take advantage of it and there would be a net positive effect on the community. But if well, you I'm just, just like, asking, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to figure out like, is there any reason we wouldn't give it out for free? If right. just everyone I mean, just had it. 
Yeah, I mean, I've, I've I had think... friends just buy commander tags and it literally changes the game for them because it, it sends out a ping to the entire map that you're doing in an event and everyone will help you with it. And I think mm -hmm. just having a version of that that maybe isn't even the commander tag, just a version of that where you can mark yourself on the map and let people join you from anywhere on that map is I think like my super... main my main argument against it would be it would then just be kind of drowned out with everything else. You know, if you give people kind of like a goal, like a very specific reason, like, hey, I want to get this commander tag. I'm going to do this, like, I don't know, small collection or pay a small amount of gold to get it. It makes it very intentional, right? It's like the people they made a mastery line for it. Yeah, I mean, that would be another option, right? But just not giving it out completely for free because there's a lot of systems in the game that are completely for free. And I think you would just kind of be buried underneath a lot of those things. And I think like, you know, I'm not trying to say like, you know, it would be useless, but I think making it a very intentional step is very important. I think, I think, I think what, that's my personal What opinion. people are saying, like just, I reckon just roll it into the mentor tag because that's a mastery, right? And mm. you can just, mm. anyone can well, do it and just letting people join on that mentor tag when they're anywhere on the map and let mentor tag move around squads like maybe mentor tag um you just remove you just no longer call it mentor tag just call it like tag one and that allows you to tag up for a squad of 10 and then the next level is the commander tag for a squad of 50. Yeah. I mean, we could also even, okay, again, this is, I feel like this is pretty derailed, but like if we're going to go on to this topic more, we could just make the commander tag upgradable, right? It's like you start with the yeah. mentor tag and then you can start adding upgrades to it. So then you can get larger and larger squads and stuff. I mean, I, that could I'm, possibly be an idea, but I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't make that much of a difference, right? Because like the thing with commanding is it literally puts a target on your back. And the types of people that are willing to put that target on their back and leading these events are likely going to go after the commander tag in the first place, whether or not, like, re regardless of the 300 gold price tag specifically right now. I'm just talking about in terms of mentality, right? It's like what? not everyone is comfortable with commanding. Yeah, yeah. I, I think and that's, you know, what's really funny about this. I tested this. I asked people in my squad when I was doing Dragon's End who has a tag. And it turned out that over half of people did. And and I was like, hey guys, I want to do the other lanes. I want to tag up. And no one did. And over half of them had to tag. engage with the game. No, but here's yeah. the reason. Here's the real reason. Look, this is real and true. Chat, agree with me. The real reason we don't want to tag up is because you get absolutely nothing for doing it, but you do five times the work, right? That That's I mean, the real that's reason. True. This is real and true. Every commander puts in <laughs> way more effort and then they get nothing for it. Um, and so yeah. people are just naturally a little bit lazy. I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes I get burnt out and I don't want to command anymore. I want somebody else to do it, but nobody else will do it because they don't get anything for doing it. Right. There's, it's yeah. just, you have more responsibility. And if you fail as like a raid leader or the open world commander, everybody okay. looks at you and they go, you are the worst commander ever. You suck. I hate you. Yeah, that's, that's what happens, right? And you don't want that to happen. It feels bad. So not only do you have more responsibility and not only do you do more work, um, but you don't get anything for it. <laughs> yep. And I think just, just to kind of like maybe remind the people that are new here, the reason why we are having this whole conversation is like, you know, what can we as the community do to enable new players to have a better experience, right? And it's because like up until this point, we've been talking about what the game can do to enable the new player experience. I think we can kind of like take this one step further, right? It's like, what can the game do to enable commanders to enable new players, right? It's like, you know, that, that would be the next question, right? It, and it, the easiest incentive would be reward, like Steph said. It's like, you know, yeah. if you incentivize commanders to command, and you're naturally going to see more of them start popping up. And they if you do, could pay they it off that in World or Swirled. If you so, could I mean, very I, directly I, pay off, it would be very good, right? If there was like a yeah, direct we, we would payoff about this in another chat, but I think Teapot suggested it would be a good idea to do something like give them extra map um reward map progress. Bonus yeah, map reward whatever, bonus, map yeah. bonus. Yeah. Like I mean that would be fine. I think more people would. I mean, I don't know mm. how much it would affect people because if if the reward isn't commensurate with the amount of responsibility or difficulty or effort, then people are just less on, likely to do it, right? On the, on the three hundred gold, actually, what what's the point of the three hundred gold? Is it um, just I think it's it, so people is it is it just read. as a as a um just to basically sink gold? Because I think it's more of a gold sink thing rather than actually um yeah than than a, a, a griefing thing because loads of people have tags and people don't grief. If you when you do a dragon's end step, I guarantee you. 30 people on that map have a tag. 
or, or at least 20. They don't tag up. I think on oh, NA it's less. Maybe I, you, I argue on less EU definitely. <laughs> on EU a lot of people have tags, particularly in like the harder content like raids and stuff. If you right click on people in a raid, um, you will see that you can give them the tag. Almost all of them you can give them the tag, but they don't. So I don't think that making it free would would make it so that everyone would like be tagged up the entire time, right? Like I just I think that people don't the the responsibility of being the leader is what puts people off from tagging up. Um, and I think that wouldn't change if it was free, right? Yeah, yeah. I think there needs to be rewards tied to commanding and like getting su successful commanding runs and that sort of thing. The same thing in strikes and raids. If commanders got extra rewards for, I don't know, like leading new people. I know Final Fantasy does this. They have like the sprout system where new players, if there's a new player in your squad, you get bonus rewards for completing that run. And I think that's, that would help a lot with the LFG as well. You'd have more people, you know, doing like weekly clears in the LFG because they get bonus rewards for helping new players and that sort of thing. Yeah. And to be clear, guys, you wouldn't get a tag just for tagging up. You'd have to have people in your squad. In World vs. World, you get yeah. a bonus pip um, if you have 10 or more people in your squad. And you get, well, you get one bonus pip for five or more, then another pip for 10 or more right so you'd have it like this so if you're literally oh, just like leading if you're leading yourself and just no one else well you don't get you <laughs> get you get nothing but you know what would be super interesting about this i think there would be a fun effect there because imagine if you got bonus rewards for being a commander you go man i want to tag up right um but what if there's a commander on your map well now you want to go to another map right and make your own map and lead that map too because you want to go and get the bonus rewards right instead of staying on the same map and just kind of like oh okay I'll, I'll just like play along so that would actually really propagate a, a lot of this which and, and you know just to kind of steer this back to what emmy said because you know we're, we're kind of we've already gone back to the in-game stuff but i do think the um community stuff is huge okay the example i give is that look if um when dragons and came out we had around like six to eight people leading Dragon's End. It's, it's all, all, it comes back to this meta event, guys. It's, it's the most important meta event in history. <laughs> also. Um, we had six to eight yeah. people running it every day. And I actually think that made a difference. You know, a lot of people got the event. Like we had like 7,000 people join the Discord. That was pretty good. I can guarantee you, if we had 100 commanders doing that, nobody would have been that mad about Dragon's End or it wouldn't have got nerfed. I can almost guarantee it, actually, um, that that wouldn't have happened. Because it would have just, so many people would have got through it, right? And it would have been so accessible and so widespread that the community was helping people with this and everyone was coming together that it would have become a non-issue, right? Um, it wouldn't have been um, a problem. So I think that, I um, and I think the same is true for raid, tra raid training, by the way, right? Like if yeah. there were way more training groups, like way more adverts to get into training communities in the guild. And look, I'll just preface this because, the, you know, the, the, we're going to we're gonna talk about this very, very soon. Yes, the social features in the game suck. Um, the game should also, you know, I want to talk about the community, but on another part about the game, yeah, the game should do a way better job of allowing guilds to advertise and communities to advertise so that new players can engage with those systems. Because, look, the easiest way to get anything done in the game is to play with other people, right? That is a fact, right? If you join a guild, you can do anything you want. That's it. But yeah, sorry, go ahead, Snub. Um, I was just going to say, I don't know if we, how do I say this without sounding horrible? I'm just trying to think of, oh, I, oh, I, I oh. Do, no, just do it. Just do it. Do it. I need an intro. I need a clip for the intro. I need a clip for the intro. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Be the villain. Yes. Well, you're saying if there's a hundred people leading, the, the problem is that the amount of people that are, that understand the mechanics and systems of the game at a very high level it's very small, right? There's it's a very small percentage. And so I don't think that it would be as successful as you're claiming it would be, at least for a while. There'd be quite a learning curve, only because you'd be spreading out all of the experienced players um, and you'd be forcing them to teach 50 other people on the map. Like you'd it would it would be a big task to lift up people. One of the reasons why the hard stuck metas are so successful is you're Putting a lot of really experienced players together, um, let's say you have 20 to 30 pretty experienced players, even 15, to just 15 to 20. You have 15 to 20 pretty experienced players. Those players can really carry the other 40. Really, they can. They can do a really good job. And so um, if you spread out 
those players so that it's one in 50, one in, I, I think it would be much more difficult. That, that's, that was my only comment. Maybe it's not as hot as I thought it was. was <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I, I, but, oh, yeah, I was really hoping some, I mean, you know, I, that is true. That is absolutely true. But the thing is, is I think that, uh, uh, well, now, now, I, now I'm going to sound toxic. Come just commanding isn't good enough, right? Like when, at, on like day one, day two, day three, day four, Dragon's End, I would spam people and say, Guardian, quickness, stability, um, Mesma, alacrity, give, Rev, stab, give, uh, Necros, epidemic, use, okay? And I'd be spamming this. I'd be getting everyone in voice, spamming map chat, spamming squad chat, right? Like, the, if everyone yeah, was doing that, problem. it would work. Yeah, but the I, yeah, I mean, you, you're talking about a very specific kind of person, right? Like, yeah. um, there are very, and I, we mentioned, alluded to this earlier, right? Leading is actually a skill, and there are very few people that have this, at least on NA, I don't know, maybe EU is some magical land that has way more commanders, right? But on <laughs> NA, there are very, there's a very small subsection of people that are willing to not only lead, but do it well, because they understand how the game works. I've I've spoken before about how I would go into people doing meta trains or whatever, and they would tell you to all spread out at the boss and like just spread loads of misinformation. Um, and, mean, and this is just because there's just you're you're asking for a very like this intersection of people that know what they're doing and are a good leader at um, at the hardest meta event in the game. I think we're fixating too much on Dragon's End again because Dragon's End was kind of like, you know, we that one required much more skill than like, let's say, for example, Arik Basin, right? But Arik Basin is also very poorly led sometimes. Sometimes it's not led at all. And again, I just want to like add the qualifier here. You know, like some people, they just want to be a taxi. Most people know what they're doing and then they can just like complete the meta anyways, right? But again, it's like if we're not talking about what the game is doing and what we as the community can do, we can just raise those expectations of commanding earlier in to the game you know it's like you know when people are leading world boss trains within hard stuff we can set the standard of okay you need to explain at least the basics of every world boss that you go to or when you're leading arc base and at least explain the fundamentals of like splitting to four different sides i think a lot of this a lot of this issue kind of boils down to there's no gradual progression from people who have never commanded before to people who command perfectly Right. And it's like, I'm, I'm going to like 100% like say for myself, like I didn't start commanding perfectly. You know, like when I first started running raid trainings, I always told people like, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm forgetting anything, tell me. And I forgot a lot of things, you know, like people told me what to improve on. But the thing is, I wasn't doing anything very high stakes when I was commanding that. I was commanding very easy elementary things that a lot of people kind of take for granted nowadays. You know, it's like, commanding Arc Basin for the first time. You've never done it before. It's terrifying. Like, what happens if, like, the meta fails? What happens if you have an excess Ooh. of new players that Ooh. don't know the, like, meta and stuff? You know, it's like, Jeez. what happens? It's terrible, right? It's like, people are, people get very, very hostile in map chat. So I guess, like, I think we're kind of missing the target right now by focusing on this one meta that requires extreme levels of organization when we're kind of neglecting the conversation around metas that don't need that extreme level of organization but would act as a very good ste stepping stone towards commanding at a higher level i i guess the problem for me is i, I agree with you by the way i think it's mm -hmm. a really positive thing if people want to sort of test the waters to, to go and start on things that are less difficult the problem is that those things don't require a lot of leadership in general right like if we say oh take up a shadow behemoth you just kind of stand there, right? It's not mm -hmm. like you have to worry much about anything happening. It's not like you have to direct people to do anything. Generally, if people are just exist at the moment that the boss is there, the, the boss will die. Um, and then maybe there's a few step ups, right? Like you could argue that chalk is maybe a little bit more, but as long as you just are present in the lane a little bit before the event and enough people are there, Generally, you're not going to fail the event. I guess where I'm going with this is that it's hard to really flex those those commander muscles and learn how to be a good and, and translate that skill into something that you develop into like a raid leader or the more complicated <laughs> things like Dragon's mm. End, right? When you don't really have to do anything in, in lots of these other metas, no? 
Yeah. I mean, no, I, I 100% agree with that, right? That's why you see people who just tag up as a taxi and arc basin and then just move on with their day, right? I guess mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say here is like, you know, it that would be considered a community responsibility, right? It's like we're not mm -hmm. setting examples because we need to. We're setting examples because that's how we make the player base better. And, you know, like obviously, like, you know, not everyone is obligated to spend their time in this way, but I, I'm speaking from personal experience here. A big reason why I started running like, you know, stuff like H3 trains and commanding metas and commanding tags is because people I looked up to a lot in the game did that for me, right? It's like we don't need every single person in the game to be a good commander. We just need one good commander to inspire two or three other people. And Indeed. then those two or three people to inspire another two or three people. We're not talking about a game of like getting 99.9% .9 of the population to be playing at a certain level. Uh, we, we were before, but I guess like my point right now is like, you know, commanding well is a process to be learned. And you usually learn that process through people that you look up to. And when you look up to people, you're more receptive to like, you know, improving your own skills. You're more receptive to like maybe coming up with ideas by yourself and like that sort of thing. So it's like, you know, if like I've, I've had people like message me for the copy pasta, I'm like, yeah, take it and stuff. And then when I joined their metas, then I see other people in the chat kind of like rallying behind them being like, yeah, like, you know, don't forget this thing or like everybody, like make sure you're like helping the commander out, place out food, eat food. Like, you know, people want the commanders to succeed. And then those commanders, I'm hoping, you know, maybe like two or three years from now, if the game is still alive by then, they're going to inspire other people to do the same thing. You know, so it's, I, I think it's like, you know, th this is definitely asking a lot. I, I don't think this is a small task. I think it is extraordinarily difficult to like, do or put in effort when you know you might not be compensated for it but all it takes is just like one person to inspire like a few more people you know yeah. to get that positive cycle started and and this is exactly why i was i was i, I brought up dragon's end actually it's because you know that that's kind of the point like the same things that you do there like obviously it's not as high stakes in octovine but if you do that same thing and you say, right, gamers, try and give quickness, try and give alacrity, right? This is the perfect way to introduce stuff to people in a really cozy environment, right? I wasn't saying that, you know, you have to go to the chat and go, yes, we're going to destroy this chat, guys. One burn every <laughs> single time. Perfect execution, no downsides, full DPS. No, but you go, okay, right. Um, we're going to organize everyone into subgroups. We're going to make sure that everyone's got the boons about right. And we're going to try and do the fight pretty well. Right, that's what you want to encourage people to do. Like that's what our commanders do. It's this the the exact same skill that you would use on the Octovine will work on Dragon's End. It's uh, the same thought process, right? The same idea, right? And, and that's why I view Dragon's End as so interesting and so pivotal to this discussion because it's ah I, I don't know what I'm trying to express it exactly. <laughs> the thing the thing about Dragon's End is that the stuff that would work, if you if you did stuff really well on Octovine and then did the same thing on Dragon's End, you would win and it wouldn't even be hard, okay? Like that, that is the reality. A, a lot of people don't want to accept that, but like, it's true, <laughs> okay? Um, you know, if you just organize people very well, you kind of improve the understanding of the composition and the way boons work, right? And you think about the encounter, it will die, right? And this is the kind of thing that we, yeah, we do need to propagate, right? Is like this kind of gentle understanding of the game. You know, it's funny, Jedrick um, runs some meta trains for Hardstuck and he was doing Drakkar and he gets this a lot, apparently. He says he gets this a lot. And he says that people often say like, holy shit, this boss is dying so fast. What's up with that, right? <laughs> and he has to explain, well, it's because I moved the players around so everyone has boons and we have way more damage because of that. Right. And players ask him, they go, why, what, what are you doing? Why are you moving people into little groups? And then he explains why the subgroups happen. Th this is why, um, getting more, this is why I said, if we had like a hundred commanders, it would actually be kind of a big deal. Um, because then you could have like, you know, hundreds or thousands of players asking that, like, why are you doing that? What's going on there? Why, why is that happening? And then that creates the opportunity to say, well, that, <clears throat> this is why, right? The reason we're doing this is because this is like the way the game works mechanically, right? This is a really important part of the way Guild Wars 2 PvE works or just combat works in general. So yeah, like I think the community can do so much here, right? Um, there's a lot to be done, right? And we have a lot of control over it, I think. I think we have more power over the culture of the game than people would actually care to admit. I think it's easier to say, oh, it's on, ain't it? We can't do anything. We're powerless, okay? We're useless, can't do anything. 
It's way easier to admit that than to think, hmm, if we actually really went for this, we could get a lot done, right? And again, I, I don't want to like, you know, toot our own horn. We are obviously amazing, by the way, guys, join our Discord now. Um, but even with a very short time, a very short setup, we've got a lot going on here. There are a lot more commanders that we've created, right? Like there are now more like 20 people in Hardsack who lead stuff, which, hey, is that the biggest number in the universe? No, it isn't, okay? But okay, I'll see you in a year when it's 100, right? Or maybe eventually it's going to be 200, or maybe 1,000, right? And well, that might be a little ambitious, but that you get the idea, right? Like, And then it can be multiple guilds. It doesn't have to be just one guild. It can be loads of guilds doing this. Um, and if we can actually kind of create this culture of, um, of, of approaching the game in a slightly more tactical way and thinking about ability usage and thinking about ability choice, then everyone wins, right? Like you're going to get more rewards. You're going to kill stuff faster, right? You're going to get more gold, right? You can do all the content in the game. I mean, it's win-win. Huge. Mm -hmm. I, I think like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you, go ahead. You know, you go ahead. I feel like I've been talking yeah, yeah. about it. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was just going to say that, um, like, I feel like spreading that, I, I think we need to change community sentiment about the kind of game that Guild Wars 2 is at Endgame, because I think a lot of people think that there is no zero tri trinity or anything like that. But there, I mean, let, let, like, let's not kid ourselves. There is roles. There is DPS, quickness, alacrity, um, and healer. And I think just having community sentiment change and people understanding that these are roles that exist in the game is really important because like me, I've started commanding stuff and I literally just tag up and tag up for a strike and go chill, run all welcome funnel whoever in and I'll just work out anyone got quickness, anyone got alacrity. And if people do separate them into groups and it's really easy. Like once you've got a commander tag and you know that there is four simple roles it's really easy to just make your own group and to buy that stuff. But a lot of players don't know that. A lot of players don't know that there is a like role composition because a lot of people think that this is a non-Trinity game and therefore it has zero roles. And I just think that's... Well, they wouldn't important. be necessarily wrong either. That's the problem is that that's right. how it's been advertised. And for yes, a long time, exactly. the game was very much like that. You you really can't blame people for, not think, for thinking there aren't roles in sure. the game. Um, because there aren't yeah. until there is basically yeah yeah i think like arena net it needs to be a you know a constant effort between arena net and the community to kind of like cement this idea yeah yeah uh, th this I, you know, I, I was just thinking about about kind of what, what you said there what i said as well um i'm reflecting you, you know it, it's <laughs> it 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 really speaks to what is the point of a video game. What is the nature of a video game? Because, you know, I, I'm saying something like, oh, you know, we should just get players to engage with the mechanics more. And I think a lot of people would say, and would reply to a lot of what we've said today and our kind of general message with, well, what if I don't want to do that? And, and I would go, well... To me, what's the point in playing a game if you're not going to engage with it, right? It's like, yeah. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. But some people don't want to, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to get past that. Like, I guess, um, in my yeah. opinion, the way you do this is that you just tune the encounter so that not everyone has to. Because that's how it is right now. Um, you know, for example, if, if, you, if you do stuff like... Um, even even raids, right? Like you can, I mean, look, you can literally sell raids with like six people or even five people. Um, so it's not like everyone has to engage with the mechanics 100%. Like, um, and certainly in the open world, look, again, just look at a log for an open world boss. You'll see that most of the damage, probably 75% of it is probably done by like five to 10 people. And the remaining 25% is like everyone below that. So it's already tuned that way. And I guess I'd really emphasize this, like the shift that we're kind of describing here is not actually a very big shift at all. It's not like, oh, you have to go and practice your rotation and get like the perfect build. It's more like, well, you should you know, maybe, maybe think about boons once in a while, right? Um, <laughs> I think I think the solution is just empowering players to play with the people that they want to play with, and like because me I I I'm like not a huge, you know I I'm not that anal about like roles and having the exact you know one alacrity one quickness in each group and that sort of thing. That's not the kind of gameplay I like. I love the chaos of having just a full group of brand new players, and um for me like just having a commander's tag and being able to just tag up and invite just whoever lets me play with those kinds of people. And it means that anyone that wants those experience runs can just not join me and join the experience groups. So if we just have more commanders and more people able to play with the people they like to play with, then I think it's less of a problem. 
Um, but right now it's tricky because it's like the <clears throat> the only way that those players can play that end game stuff like strikes and raids is joining those groups in LFG because they're yeah. the only ones that like exist. Yeah, I think I'll oh, yeah. go. Yeah, go ahead, Emmy. Go ahead. I was going to say a lot of this also boils down to like expectations and communicating those expectations, right? It's like, I imagine like when you're commanding, you're saying like, you know, all people are welcome. And then when people join, then you like, you know, that was the expectation that was set. I think a big problem and this again goes back to like sort of like the UI system is that it's very difficult to communicate those expectations to people that are not, not necessarily unwilling, but maybe just they don't realize that you're trying to communicate to them, right? There's a barrier of communication there that kind of like, I don't know. It, it just like it's very difficult to get past that barrier, right? It's like if you create a group on LFG and people just join it because they just want a taxi, then they're not going to read squad chat. They're not going to read the squad message. They're probably not even going to read like the LFG message and stuff, right? So it's like I guess the question kind of becomes like how do you like make sure that everyone's on the same page? Because whenever people are not on the same page and the expectations are different, that's when everyone gets very unhappy, right? So it's like I, I think that's like a really big question that we need to ask. Like, is that the responsibility of Ana to increase the like the yeah? Is that the pos or is that the yeah. responsibility of the game to facilitate communication? Is it our job? Like, maybe are we just bad at communicating because we're hermits and we play video games all day? Or is it like you know the person on the receiving end? Is it do they need to do stuff? Do we need to like somehow raise awareness for them that like you know hey maybe you're not paying attention you know like who do we go to to put this responsibility on and i feel like the natural answer, yeah exactly the natural answer is like everyone right it's like we as commanders need to do it new players need to do it the game needs to do it and then it just becomes a very complicated mess so it's I, like it's like uh, yeah go ahead sorry sorry to interrupt i'm just this is something i'm really like honed in on right because i've i've <laughs> trained raids for so long right i just I think it's the game. And I, I don't know if um I, I don't know if people will disagree with that. Um I think a lot of people want to put emphasis on the player, but I think it's the game's fault um a lot of the time. Because players have no way to know. Yeah. So they like <laughs> look, I, I have so many of these stories, but strikes, I say looking for DPS, person does 2K DPS, I say, why aren't you playing dps like why are you not on the dps like do you have the wrong gear or something and they say hey man i'm just trying to get my daily try to look for a dps somebody joins on core necro i say do you know what dps stands for they say no <laughs> i invite somebody in on, on dps for raids for wing one they come in they do 5k dps they say why why are you only doing 5k dps they say they say i don't know i got my build from the internet i'm like what gear do you have their gear is a a mosh of just random stuff. I'm like, well, that gear doesn't do condition damage. And they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, well, like, it just goes on and on. People just, have, people just don't understand, right? Like, it, they just don't, they just don't understand how, what their impact is on anything around them. And they have no way to test. So I actually think it's mostly the game's fault. And that's why there's a lot of misaligned expectations. I, I, this, this is perhaps my most toxic perspective ever, but I still think that not having gear inspect is Ooh. the worst thing in the game. Like it's horrible because as a commander, let, let, just think about the logic of this. Okay. Just think about the logic of this. People get you into a group. Then you have to do a pull of the boss to see if somebody has the right gear on. Because you'll know, you'll know like immediately because if they're not providing boons or whatever, you just know, but you have to do a pull. So now you've just wasted a bunch of time. Now you have to kick them and it's all uncomfortable and people are upset and it's awkward as the commander to do that. And then you have to find somebody new. Every time you go through this, you waste a whole bunch of time. And you could just solve that problem by having like gear inspect or something. Um, so again, that's just a game functionality. Like you, obviously there's some element of like, it's the community needs to help people. And, and I do in those situations, I try to educate people and help them. Um, but, and then there's, um, there's an element where, you know, it's the player, they need to do a little bit of their own research, but ultimately they're just not being introduced to these things and they get thrown, they throw themselves into something like a raid and then they get, uh, 
they get like a bit of a wake up call, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I just don't think that we have the systems and things that we need um, in order to, to help people um, to the greatest effect. Right. We don't ha we, like I can't. Do you know how complicated it is when somebody's like, well, I don't know what I need to fix on this character. I can't just inspect their character and then tell them what to fix. They got to like screenshot or tell me every piece of gear they have. Like it's way more complicated than it needs to be, right? It's way more complicated than it needs to be. All I would have to do to help somebody get better at this game is click two buttons, inspect gear, click, look at what their armor and runes are and go, oh, you don't really know how runes work because you have one of each different kind of rune and they're not giving you the maximum bonuses. Um, but, uh, I would never figure that out. It would take me way longer to figure out, uh, if, you know, when we don't have that, it, it, it's just like a pain and, and poor new players, they just don't know and they want the help, but it's just difficult to help them. You know, I, I agree. I, I agree. Bang on with Snib that I, I feel like it's a really big part of the game's problem. There's only so much we can do like as a community to spread this info, but like the majority of the players aren't watching streams podcasts youtube that sort of thing and yeah i think the game needs those sort of systems because i think a gear inspector is great for commanders as well as new players like a friend of mine who's brand new to the game he thought it'd be a great idea if you could inspect someone and click a piece of gear they have and it'll just tell you where you get that gear um stuff like that just really helps new players yeah yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I, I fully understand the logic of why it doesn't exist. Yeah, I just I, disagree I, with the logic. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> the I just, like, only fundamentally disagree way, with it. The only way they would ever do this is if it was like um, opt-in. So you can say, oh, I'm going to yeah. make my character inspectable. And yeah. even that, I don't think they would it's ever pointless do. pointless because like, everyone would like, I would just, look, I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. If, if I had new players come in, um into like a raid or something and they're like i want to learn this i'd say you have to opt into that or i can't help you because it's just it would be so annoying well, couldn't you like, do this now can you do that now what do you mean could, you could get you them, them to, to their bills. you could ask them the ping yeah. you could ask them the, you could even ask them to link you um efficiency if you wanted yeah, to i mean it's just going through right? the party. my point is that it's just very Research it's good. very annoying to have to go through all of that i, I wish it was just easier right like, I'd rather not have to be like, all right, you need to enable your API and hook up efficiency and do X, Y, and Z. Like, that's a lot of hoops to jump through to help somebody get into raids. There's a lot of hoops already. I'm, I'm saying, hey, if I have a friend that wants to get into raids and they currently have some gear that they think is good, I want to be able to tell them that it's not right immediately without having to go through a million hoops. Because the number of times where that particular thing has just totally derailed a raid training for me or has like made, made it very complicated to help somebody is just way too high. It is so difficult to help new players when um, it's, it's like everything is hidden, right? It's just, it, and you just can't tell, right? You just can't tell what they need. Um, like, if I wish I could inspect build, inspect gear, and then I just know, right? But right now we have to ping back and forth. They have to ping and again when they change it and say, is this right? It's just constant back and forth. Yeah, I, I, I do. Re like I really Easy. like the idea of new players being able to look at experienced players' gear setups and even builds, yeah. right? I, I, you know, I think yeah. that would be really great. Yeah, if I pump 50K at DE, people better inspect. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. like how... <laughs> is there any way that could be implemented into the game that is realistic <laughs> yeah right well i, I, mean, I just I, I don't see why it's bad uh, to have it's i'm going possible. to like yeah, yeah go, go 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 pull this back a little bit but like again if we're talking about like you know what can the game do versus what can we as the community do maybe you know people might not be very receptive to it at the beginning but what if we just got into the habit of like you know it's just kind of like an unspoken rule amongst people that like communicate this with each other just ping your builds and map chat after you're done with the meta right it, at that point it's kind of like obviously we can't go into the code and change things ourselves but like it, especially like if you're like a commander Just, you can yeah. maybe like tell people like hey you know we might have some newer players here at the end or like you know if you're like in the top five dps can you ping your build to the rest of the squad right that it's is like, a good that idea would be a very 
that would be like a very yeah. action oriented mm-hmm. thing that we yes. can do without relying on the game to do that for us. And do it you beforehand know? as well. Say, hey, look, you know. Yeah, we can do that beforehand. You, you can do like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah you know, here's, a, here's like a, a really good firebrand build for this I boss, right? Or like, here's a really good build for this boss, right? On X class. This is very much like theory crafting right now, but I know that you can include chat links even in the squad message. What if you like had preset builds, right? Like, let's just say like a, qu- a very a copy easy paste. quickness build. A very, yeah, and like yeah. copy paste it into the squad message. And I'm pretty sure it condenses it so that you can like mouse yeah. over it and you can see everything. Again, I'm, I'm mm. mostly thinking of ideas that what we can yeah. do because, you know, we can talk in circles about the stuff that we want Anet to do for us. But at the end of the day, that's going to take months to implement. Like I'm <clears> speaking about this as a software developer. You give us a feature, it's going to take us years to even get it like implemented, you know? So it's like, us as you know community figures and if we want to help the new players we just hand them the resources whether or not they take advantage of those resources is up to them but having it be easily accessible i think is a is a very yeah. good thing yeah, i agree and what i think you should do is before every meta event you should explain every mechanic that's about to happen oh, yeah. um, then uh, during, you should do the same. Before the meta, you should ping all the builds and explain the gear and the stats. Like, it's just, the, the, as I say this, it's just a lot, right? That, that's the yeah. problem. Is It is Let just me a interest- lot. I have a coffee pasta. I will literally send it to you. I have a section at the bottom that's general PVE concepts. And it's just like a two line copy paste for crowd control, stacking, builds and trades and subgroups. So I've what I've found a lot of success with doing during again, we're talking about the Dragon's End meta again, but you could easily apply this. Yeah, you could easily apply this to everywhere, right? But it's like Mm -hmm. I just in the pre event when nobody's doing anything, like what is the escort thing gonna do to you, right? Like everyone's just tossing remote charge bombs and stuff. I just start pacing things. I tell people very straightforward, like, you know, if you're a veteran player and you know this stuff, feel free to ignore me. But for the new players, here's what stacking is. Here's why you stack. Here's what crowd control is. This is why you use CC. This is what builds and stuff are. Here are some resources that you can go to look for. You know, it, here are what subgroups are. Here is how you identify your subgroup. You know, it's like I just literally type out a wall. Of, I am literally copy pasting more text than the text in game from like the gray Whoa. NPC dialogue. You know, so it's like I, I'm just like. I, I found a lot of people are really, really receptive to that because if I, I gave people like, you know, kind of like the the social sort of like gopher, like if you want to ignore me, just ignore me. Pretend I'm a raving lunatic, you know, but like if <laughs> people are interested, then it's there for them, you know, and I think doing it during a time where it's very low effort, whether it's like, you know, the prep time and like, you know, people are doing events to get Dragon's End contributor or if like it's like during the pre event and like, you know, people have already split into their different lanes or even like during the 60 second like downtime when you first get up to the platform, just like doing a summary, being like, all right, guys, we talked about stacking. We talked about CC. Here's like a two line summary on all of the things you should be keeping in mind. I think that makes a very, very big difference it, 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 okay let me let me amend that i don't think it makes a massive difference i think it makes an accumulated difference over time you know like if yeah. enough people start looking at it then it becomes more and more common oh yeah that is honestly the kind of stuff that we should be doing all over the place right like and that's mm-hmm. why yeah. we it's not about just getting more commanders it's about getting like quality commanders right with people who actively mm-hmm. are trying to mentor players and give them information because yeah th- this is the experience that i have had you know like it, it's we always get this really skewed experience. Like, oh man, like, you know, these players, they don't want to learn, right? You know, this is something that, you know, like comes up, like people don't want to, they don't want to hear about this. And yeah, you do get the odd YouTube comment that's like, yeah, I look, why are you doing this? No one cares. But in general, yeah, I, I have actually found that most players are very receptive to this. In any game mode, by the way, um, not just open world PVE. Uh, I, you know, if, if you say, oh, this is how this works, in general, players will go like, oh yeah, this is a really, you know, this, thanks, right? I appreciate it, right? Thanks for helping me out. I think most players are interested if you have information for them. Like there isn't this massive group of players that's like, you know what? I'm deliberately bad at the game. I enjoy being bad at the game. That's That doesn't really happen very much in my mind. Yeah, well, I've I, encountered I, I, those I players. Yeah. I feel like, they're oh. a very small percentage, though. Yeah. You know, it's like right. the vast majority oh. of people are like silent majority. They're just minding their own business. So, mm. I mean, do you think Amazon has some players who just want to like they they just say, "Hey, like, I do not want to try at all. I just want it to, to die because I'm just chilling." <laughs> and, and like that's that's like like a valid perspective, right? It's it's not like it's um super common, but there's a lot of people that are just like. 
I just chuck on the stuff that I like and that I think looks good and whatever, and I just go around. And if it takes a lot of effort, I put a lot of effort into my job or whatever, and so I don't want to put a lot of effort here. And I guess, I mean, that's something that you do it's, have to accept. Yeah, I've, there's just not much you can do for those players, really. Um, but I agree with Emmy in that, like, having those... Re we need more resources for commanders, I think. Like, mm -hmm. me as a new commander, um, having like macros like that that i could just paste in chat would be awesome i because i led like a, a raid squad the other day we're doing wing one and i can explain mechanics but like you emmy i forget what these <laughs> bosses do until they do them and you know not everyone is great at communicating those mechanics and communicating how to overcome them so i would yeah i would love more resources for just commanders to grab like macros that you paste in because what i've learned from final fantasy raiding is that like you will just join a raid in Final Fantasy and immediately someone's pasted a macro for like all the mechanics that this boss does is how to deal with them. And um, you don't see that a lot with Guild Wars. You have people like typing entire novels about <laughs> all the like mechanics in the boss and stuff like that. It's hard to follow. Yeah. yeah. You should, you should, there's this guild that does raids and every time they went into a boss, they had a whole bunch of copy and paste instructions for the boss. So they would go in and no matter who was there, they would copy and paste the entire instruction booklet for how to kill the boss. Like <laughs> you're gonna see this mechanic, this mechanic, this mechanic, and it would just go, it'd be just be like, paste, 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 just like this small novel on how to kill the boss. And they'd be like, everybody understand, press X. <laughs> and then everyone would press X and they're like, all right, let's go. Let's and, go. <laughs> right? right. But, honestly it dramatically improved right like it dramatically yeah. improved things because then they could just be like hey we're messing up on this that we explained before like does anybody have any right it i know everyone's memeing that oh and then you wipe for a million hours but it actually <laughs> did help things right because there are sure. lots of people that join raids that are actually not terrible they just don't know like one or two mechanics very well and so messing up that is really bad and if you have like six of those players in your group and they're all messing up one mechanic a little bit it really uh, accumulates after a while so if you just explain that some some people legit they won't say anything but they'll be like oh i never knew that <laughs> right and then yeah. and now suddenly they do it better so i actually think things like like that, like what Emmy's suggesting here, super valuable, super valuable. Take 100%. all the copy pasta. I'll start writing copy pastas for stuff. For my like math <laughs> completion train in a uh, Heart of Thorns, I have thirty-five something pages of copy pastas. So, yeah. Wow. And, and for wow. the record, I yeah, I know oh there's God. a lot of like That's new crazy. upcoming commanders right now. If you guys ever want me to just word vomit stuff on you, let me know, and I'll send yeah. you like. 10 google docs of stuff that i've kind of like written down we and kind of use as like personal resources now so wow yeah, that's yeah. good i i, I want to wrap things up because you know i i said i wanted to go for like two hours on this but it's been nearly three <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's not? all good why not um yeah, I, I was thinking maybe one one more topic it's a little bit tangential okay so it, a perfect way to end in my mind um, it, it ties into a, a part of this conversation, and it's something that uh, that you brought up, Bloom. It's about kind of like allowing players to play with players who have the same mindset. Uh, and it's just about kind of like the nature of Guild Wars 2 and the way instance content works. Like, do we think it will be good if just every... It, do, essentially, do we think it will be good if veteran players just basically never played open world and only went in instance content because a lot of people tend to say stuff like oh there should be an instance version of this boss right an instance version of open world and i agree this is a solution and i can see why people would think it is a solution but it actually goes very much contrary to a lot of what we've just been describing right in other words, if you have an instance version of a world boss, then the commander who's going to, um, you know, explain of like boons and subgroups and mechanics, they will never go in open world ever again. They will only do the instance version. That's like an example yeah, of a side right, of heck there. Exactly. Like, and I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. very much, I, in my mind, I'm not decided. I actually, I haven't right. thought about it. You know, I haven't thought I mean, about it enough, enough yeah. like to really decide. I'm just curious what, what, all of you lot I, think about that. I was I was in the instanced 
camp to yeah. begin with with Dragon's End. I definitely was like, okay, just just make this like um, Dragon Storm, making an instance thing. But yeah, over time, I've and with all my friends coming into the game being brand new, they've been on maps where they've just been at End of Dragons because they're finish finishing up the like story and they're in Dragon's End and they managed to join up on a Dragon's End meta and they complete it and they think it's the coolest thing ever and they're like, wow, mm. this game is awesome. And they would not have that experience at all if all of this stuff was instanced for sure. And I think blending those experienced and casual players together is what you need to do in the open. I think that's what the open world is for. You can do the organized stuff in raids and strikes, but the open world should be blending those different kinds of players together. I think that's really important to keep that like open world MMO aspect alive. Yeah, I, yes. I think that community outreach is really, really important. And that's why I think it's good that the open world doesn't get instanced too much i i wouldn't mind like you know stuff like challenge mode bosses um and stuff like that and having like having some instance world bosses but i think making loads of them or moving in that direction too much it's just going to be this really weird situation where um the open world is like a wasteland right where well, there will be loads of yeah. players there but it it will just be like the land of of completely random button pressing which which is me, I, like, I think it's really hard to get out of right it's like really hard to learn the game or, or like get any information when if, if no one knows what's going on then how are yeah. you ever supposed to kind of grasp some of the mechanics of the game right the, the I, 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 yeah, go ahead snap yeah yeah that, that, right, i, I right, like the knowledge exactly. sharing i think it's good i think it's really good it's really important um, yeah yeah because yeah. I, I think otherwise it just turns into something like the other MMOs where the open world is just dead. Like you walk around and there's just no one there and you interact with nobody and you get none of that like information sharing, like you said, Snap. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, I was, I mean, selfishly, like, I mean, here's the reality, folks. Uh, this is this is hard truth, okay? Ooh. I'm, talk I'm Ooh. talking to you people. Ooh. This is hard truth. If they, if they put in instanced Suwon, I would never ever ever do it public ever again and i think a lot of experienced players would do exactly the same thing they would never ever 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 do it public because you can just control the engagement way stronger right you can just control yeah. it it's just so much easier right why, why would you do it public if you can just get all your entire guild in there and and that's horrible for the game because then all the people that don't have a community they're like, where's the, where's all the people? How do yep. I play this game? They're in map chat like, what's going on? And nobody's answering them. Like, that'd be terrible, right? It'd be terrible. Yeah. You you have to have the knowledge sharing in order for the game to progress and for people to, to sort of learn and grow and join communities that you need this in a game. And it's it's a really good environment to have stuff that's a little bit more difficult in open world so that you combine experiences levels does it, it, are there some consequences to that? Yeah, of course, right? As a newer player, you might be a little bit frustrated by the difficulty level. Um, as, a, as an experienced player, you might be frustrated with the newer players being in your map or whatever. But ultimately it benefits everybody because more people will learn things and become more experienced. And we've absolutely seen that, absolutely, in Dragon's End. Yeah, Agreed. do not put an instance because if you do that, people will just never do public again. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that means that, yeah, I, and, and that, that would really shut down a lot of this potential for community growth, as you said, right? You know, like we, we have seen the players learn and adapt to Sue One. Well, and well, absolutely. Well, I gotta and even to the EOD. Like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I got, Ooh. Look, I'm not insulting everyone who's open world at all. I'm saying the reality is that a lot of the big communities that, that do open world stuff, they just wouldn't do it publicly anymore. And that would ostracize a whole lot of people, right? It would be, it would be really harsh, right? I'm not even talking about myself. There are communities that specifically do things like Triple Trouble. If Triple Trouble was instanced, I think these guilds and stuff would do a lot of runs completely instanced. And I think that'd be a travesty for the community because then people wouldn't just run into them right that would suck yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think because we're talking about the new player experience that stuff yeah. is super important like that's what hooks people on guild wars is coming across those world bosses and meta events and that sort of thing if you take that away it's yeah i don't know tricky you just don't have those hooks anymore 
I think this is something that's been brought up a lot in like when people like look at like the history of MMOs. And I, I kind of mentioned it a lot earlier in the stream as well, where like there's a very, very big push for sort of like accessibility nowadays. Again, not just like in terms of like handicaps and stuff, but from people that are just normal day to day people and they don't really have the time to invest into this. And there's been a much bigger push for instance content instead. And you see this in every game, not just Guild Wars You see it in Final Fantasy, you see it in WoW, you see it in Lost Ark. And it's like, there's very few opportunities to like collaborate with people on a very large scale that you just run into it, right? And I think that kind Kind of like takes away of the, a lot of the magic of like MMOs kind of being like this virtual world, right? Because it's like, you know, a lot of people use MMOs almost as an escape from the real world, right? Because there's a lot of divisions and like inner clicks and circles and stuff in the real world. And I think having the opportunity to like have these incredible large scale events is something really, really cool that you can only do in a virtual environment such as this. So I Again, possibly for selfish reasons. I would very much prefer Anet to not make so much instance content. Or no, make both, right? Like, obviously still continue doing raids and strike missions. But having that open world opportunity, I think, is becoming increasingly rare. The farther and farther we sort of, like, look at these other games and stuff. So it's just... I don't know. I, I, I like running yeah, into new people. You know, that's, like, the magic. It just feels like... Holy shit! You know, we just took down a dragon with like a 50 giant people dragon. that I've ne yeah, we've we've yeah. never seen these people before, and we managed to rally together and beat it. You know, it's like putting that into its own little like sort of sub world takes away a lot of that magic. Oh yeah, you know, it's oh, it, it's so cool to be able to just like, I I don't know, I can recall when I was first playing the game, just like stumbling into this stuff, right, and being like, holy crap, that's a that's the thing that I have to fight. <laughs> like, it's yeah. really cool, right? It's like really, really cool. And if um, if you take and put all these things private, it would just kill a lot of open world stuff. It would just the maps would be way more dead. Um, LFG wouldn't be as active, right? People would just do a lot of stuff privately, and I think that's a huge shame because people when when you combine experienced players and new players together, they share knowledge and they learn things from each other and they create friendships and bonds and you create community. And that's how lots of cool guilds and things start in the game. And without that, uh, I think it'd be a huge loss, huge loss. Mm -hmm. So what you're telling me is that all of you agree with me and that open world should be the ramp into players learning the game, which I said an hour and a half ago. All of you agree, <laughs> I win the debate, GG. I said I was on your side. Let it be known yeah. that I said true. in the very beginning. That is true, I was actually. On your side. That oh, is you true. Might yeah. Have played me, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm in the camp where we just need both, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. just do both, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, they can coexist. Like, you can do this mm -hmm. to, to both kinds of content. Yeah. It doesn't need to be mutually exclusive. So. Yeah. 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 No, I I do agree. I I, I mean, just just as one final thing, because we're gonna we'll, let, well, let's go ahead and wrap up here. Final thought, okay? Everyone got have a final thought here. But yeah, I, I would definitely say that making um strike missions or at least something like that part of the story, or like adding dungeons into the story, making it so you have to do a fractal as part of the story. Because you know, hey, fun fact, guys, like fractals actually did get introduced um kind of as part of Living World a very long time ago. Fun fact. Um, and you know, there is actually, you know, there's lore and context behind that, that could be brought into play, like adding, you know, making like the end boss of, um, of each expansion, a strike mission would be really sick, right? Balthazar strike mission, Mordremod strike mission, Zaitan strike mission. Okay. Let's go. That would be please, pretty hype, right? That would be super please, cool. Be like awesome. adding that into the game would be great. Although, you know, yeah. he, he, he might have to wait a little while for that. But yeah, um, <laughs> like I said, uh, let's get some final thoughts here. Okay, does anyone have any final thoughts on this marathon of a discussion before we all sell out and then uh, run away? I'm good. I've said my piece, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I've said everything. There Unless we go. Um, yeah, I'm just. I was gonna let that hang. I was gonna see how long that would go. Right? <laughs> you know, I. You know, I was going Can we get thirty seconds of just complete silence? Is that possible? Um, <laughs> well, okay. In that case, um, 
Let's go into rap fight. Wait, wait. Snap, were you getting trolled in the chat, by the way? Were you getting, I'm getting trolled? I'm getting hard trolled. I don't <laughs> even know why. Like, I don't even know why people are arguing with me because the, I just don't think that they. Can, I don't think their rebuttals are good. Like, I don't. I don't think they understand my point. I, I don't think they understand me, and so I keep trying to say that's not what I'm saying, but they keep saying that is what you're saying, and I'm like, yeah. but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Snebzor wants to inspect randoms and verbally delete them from Frostmore 99. It's, it's actually funny because people will like the, the I'm telling you people the only reason I want gear inspect is because I I try to help players and it's just so cumbersome to try to help them. Uh if I could just look at what they have and then just be like this is what you need to fix, it'd be so much faster. Yeah. It, it's like really important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, I think it is time. It is time to just about wrap things up. What an epic tea time. And what? A it was intense. It was getting crazy there. Right? It was wild. I like it. Um, yeah. So anyway, it is time uh, to find out who all of you people are. Because I don't know. Um, I've forgotten who I am, actually, after all that, to be honest. Uh, so hopefully some of you remember. Um, but anyway... Let's do the new friends first in the top left hand corner. Coming all the way from Twitter and YouTube. It's Bloom. Yeah, that's me. What are you, what, okay. what are you up to these yeah, days? Yeah, yeah. What, what's going on? What's up with uh, that? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Bloom <laughs> on YouTube and, and, and Twitter. Um, I make a Guild Wars 2 videos for like mostly my, my audience is like new players and the semi casual players. You know, if you're like me and you've got three pieces of ascended armor you've done like four out of the seven raids you've got like you don't even have auto loot unlocked um if you're like me and you like that sort of like casual content then and i've got it i've got it for you so boom yeah yeah i'm working on elite spec reviews right now the end of dragons elite specs so mm. yeah yeah mm. yeah that's big that's what i'm working on yeah yeah okay and also here NA leader. Leader of all NA server. <laughs> it is Emmy. What are you up yeah, to these so days? What do you do? My name is Emmy. I do a lot of like Twitch streaming, primarily targeted towards, I guess, the opposite of Bloom, so sort of like end game PvE content. So I have an emphasis on kind of like, you know, bridging the gap between new players and veteran players, usually by using like very specialized sort of like commanding techniques. So like introducing information little bits at a time, copy pastas, all that kind of good stuff. So I, uh, yeah, that's what I do. And I also have a meowsing cat puns like i think my Ooh. community would actually kill me if i didn't subject you guys to my abs cat lutely and meowsing cat puns that are fantastic in a furry single way and totally not a catastrophe of meow numental proportions so yeah i just wanted to introduce <laughs> you guys to my cat this is wow. his name is potato and oh. he's been chilling next to me for like literally the entire time i was trying to push yeah. him away, active. So like, like, yeah yep. so yeah nice okay Wow, and just keep spamming Expression Mock hosts in the chat, by the way. That will link all of these gamers so you can go check them out. And, of course, I'll be uh, linked in the YouTube video and below the stream as well. So I'm just going to do the chat, uh, the command there as well. And finally, okay, he has crawled back from the depths yeah. of mucus, <laughs> drowning in his own here. mucus. Oh, Snab. I can finally breathe. It's been like four or five days of torture, but... Hello, I'm Sneb. I like raids and endgame content, doing challenges. Recently, I started two different series on my YouTube channel. One is, can 10 guardians kill every raid boss? 10 core guardians, by the way. So I've been doing that. We've made it all through wing one now. And we're on the wing two. And then uh, the other challenge is, all one profession dragons end. Spoiler alert, untamed, not so hot. <laughs> <laughs> But, wow, uh, surprise Pikachu. Uh, all Ranger, yeah. I've gone through six so far. I'm actually going to do one today, I think. I'm going to do all Rev tonight. All Rev. So if you want to join that, I think I'll... Ooh, yeah, all okay. Rev. I think it's, I'm going to do it in like two hours or something. So. That's yeah, insane. and uh, I'm on Twitter and I stream a lot. So Wicked, there you go. Twitch.tv slash Snibzor. Snibzor Boom. everywhere. Check it out. Get in there. Right, and then finally... Right, it's me. 
I'm, you know, I, I do all this stuff. There's tea time nearly every week. We talk about various topics like this one. And we meet loads of interesting people in the community like all these. Look at them all. Look, they're everywhere. Okay. Wow. Incredible. Um, yeah, you can go and watch this channel. You can follow this channel. You can go on my YouTube. You can watch all my YouTube videos. You can go on my Twitter and, you know, read when I forget to tweet for like three days and everyone thinks I'm dead. Um, you know, all of these things are options to you. So definitely go and do all of that. Exclamation mark hosts in the chat to check out all of these incredible gamers on the show today. And of course, make sure to watch all of them. Make sure to follow all of them. Okay, you just get multiple monitors. You can have one on each. Okay, you can handle all of it. I believe in all of you. Of course, links below the stream, below the video, all that kind of stuff. But that is going to wrap up the tea time. Thank you so much for watching. Massive shout out to um, the guests here as well. My wonderful guests, Emmy, Thanks Bloom, and Sneb. I really appreciate you uh, coming on here and hanging out. Especially, you know, I've got to give a special shout out to Bloom. I think he was here at, what, 3 a.m.? 3.30, 3 I think? Yeah, yeah, so, you buddy. know, like, bright and early, ready to go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so gotta give some credit there oh, uh, for that yeah, but yeah take a nap yeah <laughs> but yeah that is gonna wrap things up uh for about now so thank you so much for watching we really hope you enjoyed the show let us know what you think okay let's get some let's get some comments going because this is a topic that i would even want to explore a little bit more because these are some of the things that we could really look at improving and um personally i just you know i really enjoyed the section about the community as well i think we actually found some real actionable things that we can do which that's a big passion of mine right i really like looking at this is what we can do now we don't have to go like oh you know anet please do something these things that we can do and i think that ultimately that should be the focus um of a lot of the discussion a lot of the you know, a lot of what we should be looking at is things that we can deliberately action to make the game a better place, right? Because that's what we're all here for. Anyway, with that incredibly long introduction, follow everyone, watch everywhere, come back and watch every single day, hit the subscribe button, uh, do it, hand over all your money. Nice. Sweet. <laughs>